Like, Screw this whole Screw this. show thing. <laughs> this doesn't even work out for you half the time. Anyways, no one even watches. I know. <laughs> Twitch is trying to stream to Mexico right now. <laughs> and craft heck? computing. I don't speak Spanish. Otherwise, I was going to go off. And... <laughs> no one wants to hear that. El mucho gusto español. <laughs> La biblioteca. Ole. <laughs> Ole. <laughs> hey, we're live. Oh, now we're live. Now we're live. Oh, damn <laughs> John finally showed up. Uh, he locked his door. It was 8.02 when the dog started It was parking. not 8.02. It was my, 8.02. My clock said I had three minutes. I was like going to walk in and be like, Jeff, run it, go! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Talking Heads, episode 41. Dang. 41. 41. I'm Jeff. I'm John. <laughs> Welcome to the show, everyone. How's it going? Woo! Ah, uh, I want a beer. What, are you, guys, so what are you guys drinking out yeah. in... Uh, in Chatland. Uh, we let's got... see. Uh, hashtag where's John? Yeah. Hashtag two minutes late. <laughs> hey, I'm trending. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I mean, it's not the most positive thing for me, but still, I'm trending. That's all that matters. That's right. Uh, Everyone tweet hashtag John's late. Yep. Hashtag John's late. Anyway, what are you guys? Uh, what are you guys drinking tonight? Yep. What do you got planned up? Yeah, and, we uh, uh, we have a couple things here. Yes, yes. So uh, this one was shared in our uh, um, uh, Discord chat. Discord chat. Uh, yep. This last week uh, was that Reverend bought this one. Yes, yeah. I believe he bought a six yeah. pack. Bought a six pack of the uh, Sierra Nevada Hoptium, uh, which I have not had the 2018. I believe I had a 2016, maybe a 2015. Or yeah, I think it, I, it's I, been a couple yeah, years. I, I think I had a 2015. Yeah. Uh, which was actually a whole percentage higher. It was like mm. ten points something. Yeah. And but I saw that today. I was like, "Hey, Revan shared that. Let's get that, and yep. maybe he can have a bottle with us." Exactly. Um, and then we also have uh, a stone beer since we're all a bunch of big Star Wars fans and Star Trek and Star Wars. Yeah. No. Uh, no. Reverend's actually drinking a uh, confused therapist. Well, pound that thing down. That's and right. Chug some. Twenty-six dollar IPA. Okay. Yeah. Not kidding. <laughs> I mean, if you want to trade, you can trade. It's not the most expensive beer ever, but that's up there. It's, it's getting up there. It, yeah. It's getting up beyond the where I want to spend on beer. Oh, yeah, especially only for a little 16-ounce pint. Right. That's way yeah. too much. I've, I've done 25 for a pint, but uh, it, it wasn't a confused therapist. It yeah. was... Was that uh, the tap room? That was... Po- yeah. That, yeah. That was I don't, probably yeah. the... I don't. I, I I only had a couple of really expensive taps or, or pints. Where was that at? No, I think I had a twenty dollar pint of yours. I yeah. think that was the most expensive that I bought of yours. I, I have had a twenty five dollar pint though. Mm. I'm trying to remember where I bought that one at. Dallas. No, it wasn't a Dallas. Because that was the only other tap room I remember you ever like saying you went to. No, I've been I've been to West Side. I've been okay. to. Vagabond, I've been. Oh to, well, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, I've been barrel and keg a couple times. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's, well, I, 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 mean, I, I go around too. I John. meant when I had the tap. Room. Yeah, when you had the tap room, yeah. Um, but but since you closed, I have to pay for my yeah, beer now. I know. So I've got to go elsewhere. Pretty lame, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so you never really did pay twenty bucks for. <laughs> John bought me a twenty dollar pint one time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, it's kind of how it went. Um, but we also have, uh, you, you, we have a lot of Star Trek stuff. We have. Wesley Crusher beer. That's right. The, the Will Wheaton special. The Will the Wheaton farting special. Wheaton Woot Stout. Yeah. <laughs> so Will Wheaton uh, collaborates with a couple of people uh, to make a beer annually at Stone. Uh, they call it the Woot Stout. So this is wow. the 2018. Uh, usually they're actually pretty good. I mean, they're not... Uh, when they first came out, they were fantastic. Now they're... Yeah. they're above... They're great. They're, yeah. they're They're not like blowing my mind, but like, yeah... Good, good, good stout, good stout, yeah. and uh, now they're more mass producing it now in the twenty or the the twelve ounces. Let's see. Someone says they're drinking bleach. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, we won't see you for much longer. Uh, you you could have said just said bush. Yeah. Uh, Tangerine wheat lost coast. I've had that. Uh, Bell's Brewery uh, Oracle DIPA. Ooh. Uh, Reverend giving a shout out for the Hoptimus. Um, underage beverages. <laughs> Panda gaming. Uh, yeah, Reverend says he's sipping on the Confused Therapist. Um, all I have are Stella. Stella's all right. Yeah. I'll drink a Stella in a pinch. It's got ABV. It's got ABV. That's right. Uh, more Wood, more Half. Uh, St. Bernadars Christmas, Christmas Ale. Ale. Ooh, that's a little... Well, I guess I don't know where you're at, but here it's warm. Yeah. 
Yeah, it, it's been 90 plus for over a week and a half. Yeah. We hit 100 on a couple of days. That's br- it's been brutal. Yeah, it's, it's been warm. And it's been way more muggy in Oregon yeah. than it typically oh. is. So um, Normally it hits 90 in Oregon and we're going, oh yeah, yeah top yeah. down convertible. It's yeah. great. Head to the beach. Dude. Usually there's a breeze. Right now, it, yeah, there's there's there, no wind No at wind all. and it, just, there's just moisture yeah. in the air and just like... Uh, yeah, scotch and scotch and soda on the rocks. Solid choice. Mm. Uh, some people give you crap for the soda, but I won't because I actually do scotch cocktails sometimes. So. Well, I mean, what is he doing? Like Mountain Dew? No, well, scotch <laughs> and soda. You can do a ses- uh, seltzer water with that. You can do it. <laughs> I would give you yeah. crap if you did Mountain Dew and scotch. Yeah, that I'd give you crap for, and, and you probably deserve it. Let's pop some of these over. All right, huh? you want the IPA or you want the stout? Let's start with the IPA. Okay. Let's, let's freshen it up and let these kind of warm up a little bit. All right, yeah, I did. They are. What are you are, storing them at? Thirty six. Yeah. Well, my God. they they were. I bought them. I brought them. Bought them warm. Uh huh. And uh, they sat in my car during work. Uh huh. And so I was like, well, I only got. I got home uh, a little past six. And I was like, how do I get these cold red crafts? So I put them in my freezer, and luckily they didn't freeze. But, yeah. So. So yeah, the IPAs I like serving cold and then letting them warm up. Yes. The the stouts I want to I want to start at fifty or forty five. Forty five fifty. Yeah. All right. Ooh. That's got a nice warm tip. Cheers, everyone. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's nice. Yeah. It's malty and hoppy. Yeah, a lot lot maltier than our. Than I recall it being, although, like I said, it's been a couple of years. Yeah. Distinguished yet deliciously hoppy. Yeah, that's good. devilishly hoppy. Sorry, devilishly, devilishly hoppy. hoppy. Not not the most intense hop flavor. I mean, it, it is a triple, so yeah. it's it's gonna have mm-hmm. a, a malt. They're, they they have to have that malt. Mm-hmm. But it is a very low triple ABV. Uh, the nine it's point a nine seven nine six. Nine six. So yeah. even smaller than that. So. Uh, I wonder if the yeast died uh, before they were expecting it because it tastes like yeah. a lot of sweetness. They probably could yeah, have gotten there, that, there's uh, quite a bit of sweetness in there. Uh, an extra percentage out of that or something. Yep. Yeah, kind of a, a surprising amount of sweetness actually. Yeah. So. I was wondering if this worked. Yep, you're up and rocking. Okay. All right, let's get to some beer news. We have some beer news, and uh, right now there are people out there that are basically trying to get. I think it's Microsoft's AI mm-hmm. to uh, distinguish beer flavors yes. and how to uh, better make beer. Can Microsoft's AI make you a better beer or brewers a better beer? And so, oh, was it Sweden? A Danish, a Danish, a Danish company yep. is basically taking Microsoft's AI and they're putting it through its paces. Essentially, yep. uh, they're. It's not saying it's ready now because they're having to just dump all this data into it. Yeah, this is the f- very early stages. Uh, they've only been going for six months. I think they said it'll yeah. be like three years before they have any results that they can publish. Yeah. But in the first six months, it is showing a lot of promise, uh, including right now it can distinguish the difference between a Pilsner and a Lager. Which is actually... Which even I have a problem oh, with yeah, sometimes. Oh, it, yeah. It's actually quite <laughs> hard, too. So uh, the fact that it's being able to taste different notes in beers mm-hmm. and detect early the whole idea is for it to detect early on hey your beer is going to taste like this yeah. here's here's the defect that you did wrong yeah um so that way brewers maybe if this becomes cheap enough mm-hmm. could be able to, like oh, you want this flavor in your beer to be pronounced you know times x here you go do this at this temperature i'll just brew it for you shut up mm-hmm. kind of similar to those brew boxes that we were uh in the, for that company in seattle yeah uh you know the the brew pods if yep. five five ten years from now this is actually at a uh price point that consumers can have mm-hmm. you might be able to be like yeah my computer can brew a beer that's right to, intelligently hey i want a beer with these flavors what's the mix that i have to get exactly and it'll spit you out a formula and then you just refine that formula yeah rather than going ah, i remember i wanted kind of this I cinnamon taste this, and i got yeah. this from this oh, I, I use this cinnamon i use that cinnamon i mean this thing could probably end up saying you have to use this particular cinnamon right um so it's it's an interesting thing mm-hmm. so um reminds me a lot of uh uh Now, uh, experimenting with flavors in beverages is nothing new, but uh, I remember hearing and and seeing actually a couple videos on um, a product that you can buy 
that is basically essential oils. But what they've done is they've uh, uh, gotten with some like high end perfume developers mm -hmm. to make a whiskey scent training kit. Ooh. And, uh, and I've wanted to buy this. It's like $400. It, it's not inexpensive. But basically, if you want to try scotches and whiskeys and things like that, what they've done is they'll send you like 100 vials of, of these essential oils that have been formulated to emulate what's inside of whiskey. Huh. And so you'll take a sip of whiskey, and then you'll smell these essential oils, and you go, okay, oh, that's what I'm smelling. There, okay. There's a little bit of sage in there. Yeah. And there's a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Interesting. But it, it's, it's meant to not be like a perfume replication of what it is, but meant to yeah. literally you're smelling it and you're tasting it and and what you're tasting is what's in the whiskey interesting uh, so all, all those professional notes that you read in the back and you're yeah. like where the hell are they getting sand and birch right. wood and it's like i don't what does yeah. birch wood even taste like right so you'd be able to pop that open put a little birch wood sm yeah thing on. Little... oh oh oh, I oh get that okay now. Like, and you go back and taste it right oh yeah i get that Th there it is yeah. and, and uh and so it helps you dig into the flavors of, of things that are out there. oh this is the rat feces that the rat got yeah oh I, yeah, hey, yeah I you're get not that. the guy who delivers the rat droppings <laughs> yeah. either ends up star trek zelda or futurama <laughs> that's, that's how we go uh Jeff, what's going on in the northeastern community? I have heard some special companies are shutting down. Is this real? I'm, I'm not sure what you mean. What you mean by that? What? What you special like companies? Wink, wink. Special companies. Wink, wink. Yeah, I'm, I'm not not sure what you mean. Northeastern community, northeast U.S. All I've heard about is breweries going into Roanoke, Virginia. Yeah, like, like four of them. <laughs> One of them from Bend. Yeah. Um. But uh, yeah, I. R refine your question. <laughs> uh, uh, there's a little bit of mage in there. That's where the magic taste comes from. <laughs> yeah. Skull says uh, he misses the old hot thumb. Yeah. 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 Coconut water for hangovers works great. Uh, Steve Steve has his tried and true remedy. It is coconut water and uh, emergency. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then like four ibuprofen. Yep. And he has that just before he goes to bed. And he swears on it yep. every time. Yep. I, I usually go Gatorade. Yeah. You, oh, it's, it's just the electrolytes. Exactly. In, in, in coconut. And yep. Yeah. Usually I, I'm a uh, couple IV profins. Uh, try to drink as much water during. <laughs> Most of the time I forget because I stumble home and I'm like, oh, uh, what? Yeah. Yeah. What was I doing? Yeah. How did I get here? Uh, Who are you? Yep. Uh, yeah. This beer has electrolytes in it, right? Yeah. I'm going to go like <laughs> half my beers on the floor and I wake up. It's still good. Uh, Brewfest is next week. It is. Gosh. Speaking I, of. Oh, gosh, man. I was like... Actually, it's your, that means one year has already passed. That's huh? right. Oh, my gosh. We have to do something. Um, yeah. Actually, last week was my one-year anniversary on YouTube. Dang. Yep. Yep. Look at that. And uh, I, I've got a couple of videos that I want to do annually, one of which is what makes the, or what is the average gamer's PC on Steam. Mm -hmm. And I, I did that last August, and my whole thought process leading up all the way like into summer is, oh, that one's coming up. I should probably start working on that. Well, I hit now, and that was the eighth video I posted, which means it was like August 15th. And, and I went... Oh god, that's next month. I should probably start crunching numbers <laughs> and making sure I have the right hardware to rebuild that and re-explore that concept. <laughs> it uh, seems like is this still work with one year yeah. later? And of course, the number that I came up with for the average GPU is a GPU that I don't own. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like now I got to go buy a GPU just to do one video. Yeah, it's just a tribute video essentially. I know <laughs> it's a callback to that yeah. one, and so. Well, we'll be doing a callback to the Brewfest by <laughs> going to Brewfest. Going to Brewfest. Ah, <laughs> uh, yep, that should be fun. That'll be fun. Might, might even live stream it. Yeah, that might maybe be maybe some parts. Yeah, maybe some parts. Yeah, uh, that'll S be fun. Sit sit down afterwards and. Oh gosh, <laughs> that's I, we're not we're not gonna stay that long. No, man. we cannot stay that long. We were only there two hours. <laughs> was it two hours? Yeah, well, was, we we also six fifteen to eight fifteen. We were only at the after party until late thirty. Oh my gosh! We you... walked over to the after party. We were there thirty minutes. That was it. Man, we drank a lot in two hours. <laughs> yeah, we did. Oh man. Oh. So. Uh, so. Yeah. Hey, you guys ever wonder where your who owns your beer and if it actually truly is craft beer mm -hmm. or not? Well, someone went out and actually made this very large 
easy to navigate chart. O- ownership chart. Yes, yeah, an ownership chart. So you can find if your favorite brewery actually is owned by basically a large corporation or if they're one of the 10,000 plus independent breweries right. out there. Uh, it's. I mean, the article itself is pretty self-explanatory. It is basically just the image. Mm-hmm. Um I think that I think I did post a image to the larger version, yeah. but um, if you scroll down to um, hold on, right there, that oh, there, there it is, and then click that. There we go. There we go. So as you can see here, uh, well, this one's actually even a bit smaller version, but still, it, it's this is a, a more condensed version. But you can Oops. see that uh, there yeah. is uh, <laughs> InBev, who InBev owns, which is mm-hmm. Anheuser Busch. Um, who Coors, Miller Coors owns, actually Hot Valley here in uh, yep. Oregon, um, down in Eugene, they're owned by them. Yeah, and that was a recent acquisition. Yeah. That was a year or two ago. Mm-hmm. It wasn't that long ago. So we can see that Goose Island is owned by InBev, mm-hmm. even though uh, Tam Barrel, Elysian, mm-hmm. um, I think we had a couple. Cigar City just got bought out by Furman's Capital, and that actually just happened a while ago, a couple months yep. ago. Lagunitas is owned by Heineken. Yep. Um, so uh, Widmer Brothers is actually on this list too. Yeah. Well, uh, I actually, I, I, yeah. So they're owned by CB. Yeah. Which uh, InBev owns like forty five percent of CB. Right. So they're technically that's why they still classify them as craft beer here in Oregon. Right. Um. So. Yeah, it's the Craft Brew Alliance. It's CBA. Yeah. So um, I, yeah. Yeah. But oh, like, uh, why am I looking over there when I have the screen right here? I I don't know. I, I, I've noticed myself do I watched the past couple of videos of me. And I'm always doing this. And Jeff provided me a computer. Yeah. All of us. You have co- your own screen. Yeah, we, we have our own co-host. I yeah. think it's because I'm like, I'm going to be like this. Yeah. Past the mic. <laughs> so I should get new contacts. Yeah, you should. My, right. my glasses. I've actually had these almost four years. And uh, yeah, they're, they're starting to wear down a little bit. Lenses still aren't scratched, though. So, uh, oh, mine are, mine are horrible. <laughs> So yeah, uh, if you ever wanted to know, oh who look, owns we had we had the it was the other link. Oh okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's not much bigger. Yeah, it's actually a smaller one. That's what she said. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. There you right, go. Nice and blown just, up. Nice and blown up. But you can see like some favorites like Russian River, they're still independently mm-hmm. owned. Yep. Uh, they have Great Notion here in Portland, still independently mm-hmm. owned. Um, so they don't list all your independent ones, but they list a lot of the major uh, bought out ones. Right. So uh, kind of a cool little. Cool, cool little chart. I thought. Yep. Um, if anyone's ever confused and thinking like, I, I drink craft beer all the time. Well, why don't you check to make sure it's actually craft beer? Yeah, Portland Pyramid Blue Moon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, whoops. What did I do? Yeah. So. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so check to see if you actually are drinking craft beer. Now a lot of these breweries though, they still produce decent beers. Yes. L- Lagunitas, one of my Lag- favorite breweries. Yeah, Lagunitas. Uh, Ten Barrel and Elysian. Every now and yeah. then, they actually do a lot of their stuff. Yeah, Elysian's another one that yeah. I really enjoy. Goose Island. I mean, yeah. we had the uh, Bourbon Barrel Stout, the yeah. Bourbon County. Yeah. And just, just because they're owned by Craftworks or InBev or Miller Coors yeah. or whoever, doesn't mean they still can't produce good beer. Yeah. Where, where it breaks down is when you have Budweiser claiming that they came out with the Red Lager Freedom Reserve. Yeah. And that it's a craft beer. That's correct. No. Bull crap, that's not a craft no. beer. Uh, or when you have Blue Moon saying, oh, we have a craft beer. No, you added horchata to Blue Moon, which is questionable at best. Yeah, exactly. Um, so th- that, when when we get a little bit snobby, those are the things that we're talking about. Yeah. It, it's, uh, no, it's... We buy Blue Moon. We buy... Oh, totally. You know, all these other... Beers. John found two Blue Moons in my fridge two weeks ago. Yeah. Because they were there. Yeah. So we so, we, we buy them because it's like, hey, look, I, I need a beer to drink. These mm-hmm. are drinkable beers and they're nice barbecue weather beers yes. are just like hey i need a beer after right. work really quick yep. i don't need the 25 dollar double ipa that mm-hmm. you know rev is drinking right now well, like I, ha- I had a hop valley ipa the double Dalek ipa on my last last yeah. video that i filmed yeah um so i, I you know those, those are good for like once a week twice a week yeah. I, I i need a good beer mm-hmm. totally. but uh yeah so woodmere again too we've had woodmere on here before mm-hmm. Uh, half of Eisen, it's okay, but yeah. you know you can get through it just fine. So, but it's sitting right next there, right there next to Red Hook. Yeah, that, I mean that, is, <laughs> that kind of. On although, although below Omission and Kona. Yeah. So, you know, I, I actually I, I like Kona every now. And I still yeah. really like the coffee porter. Yeah. Or, or the yeah the coconut coffee. Yeah, totally. I, I really still enjoy that one. Yeah, Omission's had a couple that I that I enjoy as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, 
So yeah, we we really try not to be snobs, and and we'll make fun of like Bush and Miller and Coors yeah. and 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 Budweiser and things like that, because those are mass produced to be cheap. Yeah, and and those are not craft beers. But honestly, if you enjoy them, go for it. I yeah, I don't care. It, no, we you know, we what, have friends that enjoy it too. Mm-hmm, totally. Yeah. So it's fine. Yeah. Uh, I do the same thing with whiskey. Y- yeah. You know, uh, you can become a whiskey snob. Uh, so someone uh, er- earlier, you know, said they were drinking uh, scotch and soda. And that's frowned upon by the scotch community because, oh, you're not experiencing the true that's flavors true. of scotch. It's like, uh, go over and watch the Whiskey Academy on YouTube. Mm-hmm. If you ever have questions about what you should be drinking or what how you should be drinking scotch or whiskey, they have two rules. What is the best scotch to drink? The one that you like to drink. What is the best way to drink scotch? The way that you like to drink it. Yeah. That, those are their two rules. <laughs> and so, yeah, if you have anyone ever tell you different that, oh, you, that's crap. Why would you ever do that? Well, it's because I enjoy it. Oh, yeah. cool then. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You, know. you don't have to defend it. So, cool. That was a rant I yeah. wasn't expecting to get into. <laughs> hey, hey. I, know, I thought that was going to be like a quick, hey, let's just, hey, this is cool. All right, next one. Yeah, exactly. Actually, actually, it worked out. Damn it, Lagunitas. No, like I said, Lagunitas still gets to function mostly independently. Yeah, like they, I, I, and most of the times these places are, uh, they just say, hey, we need you to bump up production of your standard ones because we're going to yeah. start doing that. Where your specialty ones, they still put as much love into those and they get right. to be reached further out. The, the Lagunitas standard IPA, what they did is they made it a little bit cheaper to mass produce and they introduced them to a distribution network and maybe set up a brewery that only brews that beer. Yeah. Um, however, Lagunitas Little Miss Something that's still a craft beer. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and whoever owns that, it, it's fine because Lagunitas still crafted that beer in-house. Yeah, they still do the Waldo Special Ale. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, it, it's still done the exact same way with the exact same guy who came up with the original recipe. Yep. Uh, I will say a lot of times people get really pissed off when breweries buy out. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I would buy, I would sell out. Oh, totally. For one, I'm going to get a bunch of money. Yep. I'm going to get access to stuff I would have never gotten access to. Mm-hmm. And people get to try my beer that have probably never gotten tried my beer because my distribution probably just increased hundredfold. Right, exactly. So, yeah, I'll so, sell out. Yeah. Sell it every day. Absolutely. <laughs> Someone says Mitsubishi. What the? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was, that was the one company yeah. on that, that really surprised like, me. I thought that one too. <laughs> It's like, why? Uh, you mean, you Mitsubishi know. has a hand in everything. Yeah, They're in yeah. consumer electronics. They obviously have yeah, cars. cars. Yeah. Um, they make TVs or made TVs for a long time. I, they, were, they were one of the last holdouts for the rear projection yeah, TVs. Yeah, Steve, actually, Steve and I both had uh, mm-hmm. the big... Uh, oh, so did I, I, I had a 57, you had a 70. I had a 16, Steve had a 70. Seven. Okay, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so yeah, we all had the big deal. Mine was the Diamond Series. Ooh, Ooh, I had the 3D capable. So did mine. Yeah. I have I have the setup still. So do I. I'm trying to, <laughs> I've been trying to sell it for years. Yeah, we finally threw the TV out because uh, yeah. uh, the DLP chip went out, and so it was just stardust across the screen. Oh, yeah. Um, um, but, uh, but yeah, yeah. I've, I've still got the glasses upstairs. For I had to change the chip out, I think once, mm-hmm. and which was actually really cheap. And that's what I really love about it. repairing those was cheap. Um, but the light bulb on it, man, mine because I kept buying the cheap off brand on Amazon. I would say twice a year I end up having to buy cheap off brand light bulbs mm-hmm. for that thing. Yep. Um, still, it's cheaper than at the time the thin oh, LCD oh, totally. plasmas. Totally. To get the same size to get to and. Uh, I don't know about yours, but mine was 1080p, uh, 120 hertz. True 120 Ooh, hertz. Yeah, really? that, that was the Diamond Series. Uh, that's probably one. And so you got... I I was rocking 1080p, 120 hertz before it was even popular with computer monitors. Yeah. So... <laughs> now, the input latency was garbage. Oh, but, yeah. But the image was nice and smooth. So... They were they were nice TVs. Yeah. All right. Anyway. 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven uh, in Japan mm-hmm. was supposed to be uh, giving out or, or starting up this brand new, I forget the brewery name, but it's a Japanese brewery. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Kieran. Kieran. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, self-serve beer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Basically, just like the slushy machines, you can go and get yourself uh, there's a 12 ounce and a 16 ounce, or no, uh, 100 yen, or where was that it? That was the price. That was the price. They, they, yeah. said, they said what sizes. But it's basically two, two different sizes that you yeah. could get. And the day they were supposed to uh, 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 release it and uh-huh. basically allow people, they're like, nope, ah, sorry, we're, we're, we're killing it. Really? <laughs> they're just like, no, nope, we're just killing it. Sorry, we can't do this. No way this is going to work. Yep. Um, pull them all off the shelf. Sorry, I forgot to put my camera back up. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, 
nothing really special other than that uh, yeah. that was going on. It was supposed to be this brand. What does that say? Uh, just says ninety three and one seventy six. Yeah, nine, ninety three and one hundred seventy six. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So ninety cents and a dollar sixty. Yeah, I think is what it worked for. Out to for be. for basically for you know a, a pint or in, twenty in small and medium cups. Yeah. So whatever that was in Japan. So and they essentially just look like coffee dispensers. Right. Um, but you could go to a Seven Eleven, put a glass in, serve yourself a beer. Yeah. Pay a guy two bucks and walk out. I totally do that. Totally would do that. But <laughs> the day it was supposed to be launched, killed it. It it went flat. Mm-hmm. But I'm bumped. Nothing better than a cheap lager and a crappy hot dog. Yeah. Right now, people want some pizza sticks and a crappy lager. That's right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm actually a big fan of the uh, the Spicy Bites. Really? The 7-Eleven yeah, hot dogs. Uh, You know, I, it was the AMP ones. I actually like those better. Really? Uh, I don't... Well, this was also back in the day when I was, a, you know... How could you even like those? I mean, God, those are terrible. <laughs> AMP hot dogs. You need to be drinking or eating the 7-Eleven hot dogs. No. <laughs> 7-Eleven wasn't close to the freeway. Calling back to the snobbery. (laughs) 7-Eleven was true rat meat. No one likes hot dogs as much as I like hot dogs. And the best hot dogs are the 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven hot dogs. (laughs) You know, if we're going to talk about hot dog news, we're going to throw Costco in the mix right now. (laughs) Oh, hands down. Costco. Yeah, but all the Costco news of, hey, I'm taking the Polish dog out. Don't even get me. I had, like, arguments with friends on that of... Of them just screaming up and down, how dare Costco do this to us? I'm like, yep. it's Costco. Yep. It's still a buck fifty to still get your hot dog. Still a buck fifty to the regular yeah. hot dog. They just took the Polish dog away. Yep. Which, I got the Polish, so I, I'm in the crowd that was really disappointed. Oh, yeah, I totally am, too. Yeah. Uh, I, I still love the Polish dog. It has flavor to it. Yeah. Um, Were you, they just raising the price or just getting rid of it? They just got rid of it. Okay. They, they're not. They're just not selling it at the restaurant. They're going to be... You can go and buy the packs of them. And take them home, but they're just no longer going to sell you the same package that they got the hot dog at the buck fifty price uh, and the soda. There's my wife taking my wallet away again. Mr. <laughs> tooth Fairy, you have to pay up. That's right. My daughter lost her fourth tooth this afternoon. Because you hit so, her? Uh, Jeez, Jeff. Well, she was mouthing off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she hit herself in the mouth with the... Uh, Oh, she, she she was swimming in, she was swimming in grandma's pool and had the uh, the kickboard up oh okay. and uh, pushed it into the water and it came up and popped her uh, and popped one more of her teeth out. I thought I was like, oh, I want that toy. I know how to get it. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy, pay me now. <laughs> that tooth has been loose for a month. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you're like, hey, you like saltwater taffy, right? Yeah, exactly. There you go. Eat this. <laughs> uh, uh, so hot, hot hot dog takes. Hot, yeah, right. <laughs> so so, but we've well speaking of hot dogs, but and, and, and beers and beverages, but mm-hmm. we've talked about a lot of weird beers on here. Yeah, we've talked like rock beers. Mm-hmm. We've talked uh, bone uh, ancient yeast beers, mm-hmm. shipwreck beers, shipwreck beers. Now this one's up there. This one's up there. Yeah. We get to talk about lobster beer. Lobster beer. <laughs> and the the cool thing actually the best thing i found about this was it's not an ipa and it's not an ale really it's a saison okay it's a farmhouse saison so they actually went a little funky with this uh you kind of have to yeah you kind of yeah. have to so most of the weird beers that people end up brewing are usually the lagers of the ipas and, y- and it gets really tired after, uh, yeah after a while so uh and the article <laughs> oh should... look this ipa has jalapenos yeah. On it. Yeah. Uh, yeah um so the cool thing about this is that it's i was it was main lobster yeah main lobster mm-hmm. and uh so they boiled the lobster at the very beginning of the beer Mm-hmm. And then uh, as and then they'll cook it in that, and then they'll let the brewers and the the um, people that work there eat the lobster. Yeah. And then they take the shell and then steep that back into the beer. So after you've eaten it, nice. they put the shell back in. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a it's a they don't that's, waste a bit of the lobster. One way to get it all all back in there. Yeah, I think then it had a, it's not what not. And then they when throw it comes a little to lobster. Yeah. They throw a little salt in there and uh, kind of let it for, and they let it for or sit for a year. Yeah. And so it, they said it's a kind of a tart, salty, funky beer. Yeah. So I can, but, I can imagine. Yeah. I did look it up. It actually gets decent rating. It's at the three eight, like three eight three, huh. three eight four. Yeah. And this is made in Maine, or where's the beer made? I know it's, the uh, 
Yeah, uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, Maine. it's in Maine. Okay. Yeah. So they yeah they didn't really talk all, all they they talked about was basically just the process of it. Um, you have to go there to get it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was just interesting. 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 <laughs> uh, Oxbow staff. I'll try Oxbow, just about anything. Oxbow Brewing. Now now I will say Farmhouse is probably my least favorite beer. Um, I, I'm not a fan of farmhouse beers typically. Uh-huh. The saison has me interested. Yeah, because so, I, I do like saisons. Well, so. it was interesting because they talked about having salt, so I was like, "Oh, did they make this more of a goes really?" You know. Right. Um, well, I would have thought that would have been. It's probably salty from from the brine on the uh, the lobster, on the lobster probably, itself, rather yeah. than being brewed with salt water. Yeah, which is how you get a goes normally. Uh, yeah, finish with a salt and tart. The breath. Yeah. Tastes actually, sweet. Actually, no, go ahead. Sweet yeah, briny and lobster. So. Yeah. It's supposed to be their nice summer beer release. Yeah. Summer in uh, Maine. Uh, so someone, uh, Uris, I believe, uh, said a pub in Ireland had its opening night advertised as self-service. They had to close for a month afterwards for renovations. Many police were called and the place was wiped out. That's... Everyone else was very happy, though. That's awesome. <laughs> they probably became the talk of, like, we're going there every night. Yep. So, we've held 46 viewers on Beer News Alone for 35 minutes. Heck, yeah. 33 minutes. You were two minutes late. What? So was not. It's your blocked <laughs> door. Well, we did talk about hot dogs. Mm-hmm. You know, and then we ranted on about a little bit of hot whiskey. Hot dogs and whiskey tasting. Yeah. Yep. So, it wasn't purely beer. It wasn't purely beer. But it was, it was all food related. It was all, yeah. No, nothing but food and beer on a talk show. Yeah. <laughs> on a tech <laughs> what, talk show. I'm pretty sure that's what you guys turned in, tuned in for. That's right. Let's get into some tech news. All right. I'll, I'll, just, Jeff! How, how, well, I'm sorry, but... How was it during beer news? I beat you. Yeah. I was talking. <laughs> I talked. Look, I was at the point. I was like, Jeff finished the beer before me. <laughs> all right. I ain't no lightweight drunk. <laughs> it's all you on this one, buddy. <laughs> I'll scroll and drink. You, you, you just sit back and relax. Yeah. You have earned it, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, God. What's funny is I realized that it, like me, I was halfway down, and you had taken like a drink. Yeah, and it's like I'm going to beat John in this one. There's, <laughs> there's no question. Like now I know what Jeff feels like when he's just talking. He's like, I want, I want to drink, but now I'm, I'm still talking. I, I'm not going to lie. I zoned out once or twice. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I started reading chat, and then I went over here, and it's like. Oh, you asked a question. Sorry, what was that? Oh, they did what with that lobster? That's weird. Hey, don't worry. I'm going to be doing that soon with some uh, of these articles. I am horrible. All right. So EK has... Uh, they've been in the server market before, but they announced a water block this week that is uh, specifically for the Intel 3476... 3647. I can never get that number right on the first try. 3647 socket. Um, or the socket that their new unreleased i9-28 core is going to be running out. So, hey, now we can maybe water cool it if you hey. add some liquid nitrogen inside of there. Um, so, uh, these are um, specifically low-profile water blocks. And let me see the mouse here real quick. Um, there's a couple things that I wanted to point out on here. Uh, first and foremost is there's the standard um, uh, G, G and a quarter, or G quarter, um, uh threads on the top there's also threads on either side so you can actually run these in a 1u server that's nice which is incredibly cool and then the uh the plate is a uh, nickel plated copper um so very very cool looking blocks um yeah very sleek looking right uh and it and it kind of goes to prove that ek is kind of going uh doubling down on the server market as far as this kind of stuff goes um i am very curious to see what what comes of this, but they say uh, server-grade fittings, server-grade plumbing, um, server-grade blocks. So as with all server, or as with all water cooling software, or software, hardware, hardware nothing is leak-proof. Nothing will ever be leak-proof. Um, but the fact that they're willing to put this into a server is is pretty cool. And the pricing is not bad. Yeah. Um, that's uh, 100, 140 uh, British pounds or... 
Um, about 160, yeah. 160 dollars, give or take, which is not that far beyond their Annihilator desktop uh, coolers. No, that's, uh, usually that, priced at one fifteen to one thirty. Yeah, I was gonna say about one thirty so, sounds about right. So for not that much a lot more. Of standard water blocks are around that price. Right. So for server edition, something that's they're saying is for a server. Correct. Uh, that's. That's cheap, not bad. That's cheap. That's not bad. Yeah, I, I was expecting these to come in at like two forty or more, yeah. and and so one sixty. That that's a pretty compelling price point. Um, and these are going to be for the uh, the square uh, ILM mounts. Um, typically, servers have a more narrow uh, socket mount um, or a heat sink mount on them, um, and that's what was referred to as square ILM or narrow ILM. Um, uh, EK has previously released a narrow ILM, so these are going to actually be aimed more at workstation type applications for the multiprocessor workstations, mm. um, where you would put an i9 uh, unreleased yeah. 28 core overclockable. Whatever scheme. with the, w yeah exactly liquid cooling. Um, and I think I saw or... Linus Tech Tips has a couple in his office right now. Oh really? Um, because he has a water cooled server. Um, I don't think it's the 3674. Why can I never remember that socket? <laughs> uh, I, I don't believe his... 3647? 3647 or 3674, yeah. whatever the socket is. The the big Intel one. Um, the one that's like a card. Intel's half-size Threadripper. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I don't believe his current server is, is that socket. I believe his current server is based off X99, if mm. I remember right. But he does have a 2U water-cooled server. Um, so curious to see if he's upgrading that or if he's water cooling his 56 cores for some reason. I don't know. Um, but yeah, uh, so it's already been seen in the wild or at least in a reviewer's hands. So very, very interesting. Um, let's see what else we What's got. Maybe yeah, we can get like 4.8 on it now without exotic water cooling. Uh, no, you're still going to need exotic water cooling for that 28 core to hit five gigahertz. Um, I imagine with the water cooling, you can get 4.0, 4.2. But unless you go subambient, I don't think you're going to get beyond that. Um, and even with the subambient cooling, they were still hitting ADC. So keep that in mind. Yeah. Uh, th this was not a cool running chip. This was a power hungry chip. Oh, and the lights were dimming in this in the <laughs> stage where they were doing the the demo. Well, you're also talking I'm, about. I'm kidding on that kind of. Well, yeah, you were talking too, like when they tried to demo it afterwards. They tried the press, to demo it in the hotel room. In the room, hotel room, and they couldn't because the... There weren't the, enough circuits in yeah. the hotel room to run the computer. Um, <laughs> they blew the fuse. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, the couple people who had who had motherboards for this, who had workstation motherboards, they had the CPUs pulled because they weren't supposed to be demoing the CPUs running modern programs, and apparently they were trying to run Cinebench and a couple other things. So Intel actually came and pulled the, the review CPUs from there. Oh, so yeah, the... Dick move it, intel is just uh, intel i love you your local company a lot of our uh state economy kind of depends on you doing well um but a lot of questions right now surrounding intel and their future uh, yeah as, as far as their it's like intel nike and their current dominance rather yeah um, it ah oh man it's not looking good it is not looking good i mean aren't a lot of people getting poached too from them or are they poaching? In, Intel, no. Intel and AMD are poaching people from each other. Yeah. Um, th there's a lot of back and forth going right now. Yeah. Um, since the Supreme Court ruled three years ago that you can't have anti-poaching laws. <clears throat> yep. You're allowed to poach from other companies. It's totally, totally oh, didn't, reasonable. Didn't Facebook poach someone from Intel? Oh, absolutely. Facebook yeah. poaches all the time. Um, you know, Facebook poached uh, John Carmack from id Software. Yeah, they, and then, you know, didn't they poach, uh, I forget their, the chip designer or head, head, I forget what head guy, but they're, they're, well, the, Facebook the, is designing some chip. No, the, the Ryzen developer is now over at Intel. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm forgetting his name. Yeah. But yeah, the guy who developed Ryzen is now working for Intel. So. It basically, it's like, hey, yeah, add another zero to my picture. Yeah, I'll come to you. Yeah, cool. Sure, whatever. Yeah. Oh, AMD, you want to add another zero to that? Okay, I'll oh, come yeah, back. I'll, I'll come that. back. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. By the way, here's my Dropbox account. Just all yep. my plans are in there. Just whatever. <laughs> yep. Yeah, uh, 3647 socket still on EATX board. Curious to see one in a PowerEdge or Pro Alliance server. They're coming. They're coming very shortly. Um, those are the, the Xeon Platinum, uh, Xeon Gold, Xeon whatever. Um, Ooh, so. it dripped. Ooh. Ooh, it's very pretty. You guys missed it. <laughs> John on his Instagram. That's right. That's I right. All right. Uh, 
Yeah. AMD Jeff needs poached NVIDIA. Uh, actually, that's already gone both ways. Mm -hmm. AMD's poached NVIDIA and NVIDIA's poached AMD. So it, it works both yeah. ways. Um, all right. I'm live for your die hard. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so this one's just a, a brief news item, but something that's kind of cool to see. Interesting, um, it might happen. Right. It is happening. It, well, it is happening, right. but the, I think it was more of the graphics card. Uh, the integrative part was more of the... Right. So one of the current problems with the VR headset market... And I'll, I'll and he, right here. He'll, he'll, he'll pull one of his many headsets. Shut up. <laughs> so here's my Windows Mixed Reality... That's it. I don't Which know why was I on a video. I don't know why I grabbed the controllers. Um, the problem with uh, most virtual reality headsets now is the cabling going to them. So I've got an HDMI and a USB 3.0 plug. And looks like audio. Um, and, and audio, which comes out. Uh, that's an output for the audio so I can plug in headphones. Yeah, additional. Um, so right now, you, uh, the Windows Mixed Reality headsets are being powered by USB 3.0, mm -hmm. which is... Um, has more available amperage than USB 2.0 did. You can go up to, I believe it's 1.5 or 2 amps with that. Whereas USB 2.0, you could only do 500 milliamps in spec. Mm -hmm. um, so, but when you consider the draw of multiple OLED screens, multiple, or in the Windows case, multiple IPS panels. Yeah. Um, when you consider the power draw, the brightness, uh, you also have to power the audio amp. You have to power this, you have to power that. Two amps doesn't give you a lot to work with. And... There's length limitations with HDMI. Um, and so if I wanted to build a VR arcade where I had like a central stack of servers and then just a row of, of arcade machines, HDMI really doesn't like to go beyond 25 feet without some special boosters. Yeah. And when you add those boosters, you can introduce latency into your system. Um, and that just and that kills your VR, with VR experience. So there's a lot of inherent problems with the cabling today that goes, yeah, 2.1 amp, thank you. Um, I, I knew it was somewhere around there. Um, but there's a lot of inherent problems today that goes with the cabling that goes to VR headsets. Now, people like HTC and Oculus are using uh, dedicated power amps or pa uh, power, power bricks that, yeah. uh, that power the headsets, but that adds a whole controller box and extra cabling. And to plug in an HTC Vive, it's three, uh, three power bricks plus a control box, three cables going to your computer, and then three cables going to the headset. It's a ridiculous amount of wiring. Plus, if your base stations can't see each other, uh, you need to run a cable between the base stations. Oops, sorry. Uh, so there. they can communicate with each other. Um, it's an intense amount of setup. It's a ridiculous amount of cabling. Um, People make it look easy. They do make it look easy. Once it's set up, it works great most times. Um, but it basically takes all most of your ports on your standard computer. Right. Yeah, uh, and, and it's, it's crazy. Um, so... There's now a consortium of different companies. Um, a lot of different a companies. A lot of different companies. This is a amazing. AMD, NVIDIA, uh, Oculus. Microsoft, Oculus, HTC. Yeah. All of your big players for, for VR. Your, your graphics card manufacturers and your three main headset manufacturers. Um, they have teamed up to eliminate the, the cabling issue yeah. and come up with a new USB Type-C standard. So a single USB Type-C cable in the future will be used to plug in your headset, power your headset, provide data, provide tracking, provide everything else, provide audio. Um, what they're doing is it's a USB-C uh, revision 3 or something? Yeah, what do they three, call three it? Al alternate mode. Uh, yeah. Alternate mode, alternate excuse mode. me. USB-C alternate mode. Um, and so what this does is it uses some of the unused pins in USB-C um, to provide a USB 3.1 interface, a USB 2.0 interface for some lower latency or some lower uh, bandwidth requirements. Yeah. So that, that could be like your audio, whereas your tracking and your video goes, go through the USB Higher, 3. Yeah. Um, USB-C can also provide more power. Um, there's not really a length restriction for HDMI signals going through USB-C cables because there's an amplifier built into the cable as a whole. Oh, and Valve. And yeah, Valve, so, sorry, yeah. I, I forgot about Valve. Um, but, uh, yeah, no Sony. Yeah, of course no Sony. Yeah. They, they did their own thing with optical tracking, and it's going to be great. <laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> anyway, so what they're hoping to do is solve all of these connection issues with a single cable that is user-replaceable and extendable. Yeah. Um, so you can run a 100-foot USB-C cable and still be fine. Yeah. Um, and have it be low latency and have it be 
um, very, very simple to, to use. Yeah, no, the, but the problem that they were talking about here is like they'll all get together. But now the problem is how do you get the graphics card companies, mm -hmm. uh, all the computer companies to build that into their graphics cards right. as a standard? Right now, most of the time, I don't, I don't even know a single one that actually has that or at least a, a standard like non-specialty one. Right. You know. Uh, as far as USB-C, really the only places I've seen that is in laptops. Yeah. Um, I, I don't believe I've seen a graphics card with USB-C. Now they're showing on the screen here um, an MSI unreleased version of the uh, of the 1080 Ti 1080 with a yeah. USB-C. Yeah, right there. Um, but again, that's an unreleased version of the 1080 Ti. Yeah, and uh, they did talk about there, like you said, a couple laptops will have it mm -hmm. for like uh, extended monitors, right, or, something or, like or that. display port, or functions. display port functions, right. Um, so they know that it works, and they're really trying to get the AMD and the Nvidia on board for the graphics cards, the GPUs, uh, to really kind of start making that more of the standard additions right. on top of things. And once that happens. That's really where the single port or the these these wires and the the um, I want to say Oculus Rift, but I, that's just the the VR VR right. headsets will come into real play because if you don't have that, it doesn't really make a difference because now you're having to buy adapters still and mm -hmm. you lose everything still. Yep. Um, uh, someone says, could you use a dedicated capture card with USB-C or would there be too much latency? Actually, uh, both of my capture cards are USB 3.0. Um, I have a cam link and I have another one that they asked me not to mention who they are. Um, it's weird, I know, but, um, but I have a, a sample coming actually on Friday uh, of another USB 3.0 capture card. It's not USB-C, but it's USB 3.0. Mm. Um, and actually, uh, Epos Vox, uh, a YouTuber, did a review, and I think he posted it today, of a USB, USB Type-C 3.1 uh, capture card. Oh, okay. Uh, that's HDMI, and it does 4K 30 and 1080 60. That's not bad. Yeah, um, and it also uh, and and near low latency. The thing with capture cards is if you're talking about plugging in your Xbox or your PlayStation and putting them up to a PC monitor inside of Windows and then playing the game live on the monitor, really there's nothing that's low latency. Um, all, all of the capture cards have inherent latency going into the computer, being processed by software, and then outputted to your monitor. Yeah. Um, the the better ones do HDMI pass through, and so you can have a second monitor set up, so you can have your PC capture station with your signal coming in, but then a dedicated pass through HDMI that goes to a secondary monitor. And this this uh, capture card from uh, I believe it was an AverMedia card over USB C, that did that. No. Um, and there's a couple others that I've done that do that. Um, even my cheap AGP Tech does that. This what one here. What about the one that you reviewed? This is the one that I reviewed. Oh, was it? No, what about that other one you reviewed? Uh, From... That one came in and it had a problem in manufacturing, so I had to go back and that's coming back on. Oh, time. okay. So, but uh, yeah, even my, my AGP Tech really, really cheap capture card that I've used a couple of times on this channel, uh, it has a, an HDMI pass through for zero latency output. Which actually you, you mentioned to me, it's actually mm -hmm. a pretty decent card. It's a decent card for $90, yeah. although... Although you have something, I have something. Something, I have something. So stay tuned, watch Jeff's stay tuned. channel, hit yep. subscribe, hit like, follow him on Instagram, on tap Twitter, follow. It's basically the same spiel I say all the time. I'm I know. Just, you're staying it. I know. You can just rattle it off. <laughs> I could just rattle it off. Hell, now. you say craft computing on your channel half the time anyway. <laughs> I know. I have to edit that part out. <laughs> I'm drawing from craft. Ah, oh, damn it. So it was really funny. So I guest starred on John's channel. Uh, Very on, first for, for, yeah, for, for his first episode for, for two episodes. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and what was really funny is uh, John's very first blooper on his channel uh, that he posted <laughs> at the end of his very first video was, uh, hey guys, I'm John with Craft Computing. God dang it. <laughs> and, and he was so disappointed because it's like, you know in his head he's going, okay, I'm John with Hops and Brews. I'm John with Hops yeah. and Brews. I'm John with Hops and Brews. Hey guys, it's John with Craft Computing. Oh, God. God damn it. <laughs> um, and so I came over to his house and we're sitting there joking about that first blooper. And I said, you're still going to say Craft Computing. He goes, no, I'm not. Don't no. jinx me. And, uh, and, we're talking for like maybe 20 minutes before we're shooting yeah. the episode. We hit we hit record on the camera and he goes, "Hey guys, welcome to Hobson or uh, yeah, help, welcome to Craft Computing." He goes, "Hey guys, I'm John. Welcome to Craft." Ah, oh, God! <laughs> like, Shut up, John! And I just lost it. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta go. You gotta come back. We gotta do those uh, those specialty cocktails. Yeah, we gotta do some beer cocktails. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, Skull says we have to have another. We beer have to time. have another beer. So it's beer time. Uh, uh, why don't you grab some stout glasses and? All right, so this is again. If you didn't, weren't with us at the beginning of the show, this is Stone Brewing's uh, Woodstock. Uh, 
No, you gotta say the whole thing. Oh. Farkin Wheat and Woot Stout. Yeah. Stone Farkin Wheat and Woot. Stone Farkin Wheat and Woot Stout. <laughs> Um, this is a collaboration with none other than Wesley Crusher, Will yes. Wheaton. Um, and uh, it is an 11.5% Imperial Stout. Um, ale, ale brewed with pecans, wheat, and rye, one quarter aged in bourbon barrels. Yeah. Um, so. And this is actually going to be, they're going to have a panel at the San Diego Comic Con just for this beer with really? Will Wheaton. Uh, nice. They said like last year. Thanks for you know giving me the bottle over. Oh. <laughs> but they said like last year it was actually just but that one's not for me. Just sold out. No. Right away. So they purposely on their social media accounts then said that they were gonna have extra. Yeah. Um Will Wheaton's actually one of my favorite YouTube watches. Uh watch him with uh um board games. Oh yeah. He, he does his uh, board game sit downs. And he's hilarious. That 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 show was just great. So Wow, a little bit of a head there, John. I like... <laughs> yeah. Finish that sentence. Come on. No. Beer. <laughs> I like beer. <laughs> Hope my wife's watching. Yeah. <laughs> Craft computing. I didn't do the fancy knife trick. I'll put it away then. Oh, okay. I ruined uh... it. Oh, come on. It just like lies at the end. Well, I was there you it, go. I was holding it in the wrong spot. Yeah. Good enough. One yeah. of those, like, five were good. Yeah, shit. It's, it's not bad. It, it's harder than it looks. I actually did that for the first time in a video, uh, so that'll be going live. My, my very next video mm. will have the, 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 the knife flip. flip. So. This isn't bad. Uh, any good with Linux drivers? Referring to that HDMI capture card? Actually, no. It was not any good with Linux drivers. That was uh, Epos Vox... Uh, Mention that specifically. Not very good with Mac, not very good with, with uh, Linux, even though it uses UVC drivers. So it uses a universal video card or mm -hmm. video camera driver. Not good with Linux, not good with Apple. Mm. And actually the card itself had some uh, had some weird driver issues even inside of Windows, um, uh, which I haven't talked to him or mentioned anything about it to him yet, but I suspect it may have been a power delivery issue because that's actually what was affecting the capture card that I had to send back. Mm. Um, Interesting. Not different model, but uh, when you start, when you're doing a capture card that's external that doesn't have 75 watts of PCIe power being delivered to it, um, and you're trying to pull 2.1 amps at 12 volt on USB 2 on USB 3.1, um, I can see where you can run into a power issue trying to process 100 or 1080p 144 hertz yeah. or 240 hertz, um, which that capture card is technically capable of, but I, I think it may all depend to port selection, USB controller, quality, motherboard, yeah, motherboard power delivery. Yeah. Uh, the more bandwidth you throw at things, the more complicated they get. And we've seen that with SSDs, we've seen that with graphics cards, we've seen that with processors as they've gotten bigger and bigger, even though lithog lithography is getting smaller and smaller. Yeah. Um, Just because it says it can do it doesn't necessarily mean it could do it good. Right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, close one there, John. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Knives, beer, technology. This show has it all. Yeah. Uh, I was disappointed in your last video, though. You oh, yeah, the, I know. He had the wrong knife. And you know what? Even in... Uh, I filmed one after that, and I was planning on using the, the right knife. Yeah. And uh, and as I'm getting set up for the video, I went, okay, so how am I going to unbox this? And I, I cut it out and I went, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even on camera. I had the wrong knife. And it's like, well, that's ruined now. <laughs> Great. Uh, hey, Jeff. Hey, Evan. What's up? <laughs> uh, let's see. Hello again from Germany. How's it going? Guten Tag. You need to learn some more German greetings. Uh, yeah, no, do I? It's a, What greeting? Heil? Well, well <laughs> Heil. <laughs> I apologize on behalf of Kraft Computing. John's statements are his own and do not reflect the views of Kraft Computing. Um... <laughs> But I was classified as second on <laughs> on camera personality today. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so I'm trying to get press passes for uh, for uh, Pax West, and I had to tell them what all John and Steve and Rhett do as far as their coverage requirements for <laughs> Pax West in in representation of me. Yeah, it was hilarious. And, uh, and so it's like, I can't have them all be on-air personality. And so John is on-air personality number two. 
Uh, Steve is my camera operator and Red is my editor. <laughs> So, and they've all done that to some extent on the channel yeah. it, it, and they'll probably fill that function at the show. I was trying to think of who would actually would fill that function. Then I tried to think of what technically you could do and I went, well, John could talk. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Get a couple beers in me and packs. I'll be entertaining. Trust me. Yep. Half the people sit there and think, he's drunk. I haven't even had one beer yet. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> we'll have finished half a beer, and and people go, "Oh, dude, John is so lit." <laughs> like, what? What's going on? It's like it was a four percent. Yeah, <laughs> we have like a session IPA. Wow, John smashed. John smashed. Uh, as I've described a lot of times in the show, John is what I would describe as just a very loose personality. Yes, I'm, I'm loose, lively, friendly. Yep. Uh, a character. John is best co-host. You have fans. Yes. Hashtag John is late. Hashtag John is late. You know, I have to make some kind of trending. Mm-hmm. I have to trend somehow. So, anyways. Yep. What else? Um, health warning, do not attempt to drink the knife. <laughs> Red is the mascot. Red is the mascot. Red is the mascot. He does have a better beard than either of you. Yeah. I, I can't. He's actually got a better beard than me, and that really yeah, pisses yeah. me off. Red's got this. Uh, you know what actually is funny? Red has the most unique laugh out of all of us. Yes, and it's just I don't. It almost looks like he like slaps the table every time he laughs. laughs. Yeah, right. I know you're watching. Yeah, <laughs> actually, it's funny. Red and I went to a barbecue. So Red and I, we've been friends for a really long time. And I so, know so, someone say he have a girlfriend. We're all married. Yeah, and we've all been married for a long time. Yeah. So um, I've known Red since he's like. 17 or something like that basically yeah. we him and i know a lot of people uh, we played in bands together or have yeah. other people jeff jeff and him haven't played but jeff and i have played in a band mm. and uh, so i've known Rhett for I've a long i've actually never played with Rhett. yeah i need to do that sometime no actually yeah he great oh yeah he can play almost anything yeah um but uh Rhett and i went to a friend's barbecue uh and we actually i, I was like Rhett, you know i haven't actually physically seen you in a long time but yet, I feel like we haven't skipped a beat because we're right. always... I'm either watching you online or we're on... Or we're chatting. Uh, or we're chatting. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so we've got our Discord, which, by the way, join my Patreon for a dollar a month. Dollar, minimum you, dollar. You can do more yep, if you want. You can do more. And, and there's quite a few who do. Yeah. Um, but join my, my Patreon. You can get access to my Discord server. You can chat with us all day oh, long. All day long. Um, or the other people. There's a lot of other people on yeah. there. Uh, there's really never less than about 15 people... On there. Yeah. Uh, and I think I have 57 Patreons Some, now. Something like that. Patrons it's, it's now. getting there. It, it's getting up there. So, um, so yeah. yeah we, we usually have... Uh, it's, it's basically just three three categories. We have the craft computing, which is mostly tech. Mm -hmm. If you have a question for Jeff or one of us or anyone else, because a lot of people on the channel, they like tech. Yeah. The, the craft computing is an anything goes section. A anything. It's just general chat. What are you doing today? We've had... People who are, um, we have one guy who uh, has an LS swap into his Miata, which yeah. is a pretty freaking sweet build. Uh, we've gotten into car talk. Uh, we've gotten into wood cutting talk. Yeah. Uh, literally anything that's going on with you, let's talk about it. Yeah. That, that's and craft computing. Then we or, have, or questions on tech. Yeah. And then we have the, the, the Talking Heads channel. So usually mm -hmm. that's the one that's live during Talking Heads. Mm -hmm. or, or a couple hours or, before. Or we'll start talking about news items yeah. and getting, getting feedback. Before or a little afterwards, too. Yep. And then we have, uh, which was formerly the beer channel. Now it's called 10 Forward. That's right. Uh, appropriately named. <laughs> appropriately named because a lot of BS goes in that. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that That's where our beer talk, liquor talk, cocktail talk, and meme wars happen. And meme wars and smack <laughs> talk. All that goes in there. Yeah. Um, and it's it's yeah it's all good fun. No one mm -hmm. gets a not we've never had any fights. No offensive stuff. Um, everyone kind of learns to get along, and a lot of people have actually become pretty good friends. It seems to be. Yeah, uh, uh, we've had a there. couple beer swaps happen. Yeah. between patrons. Like I'm not I'm nowhere involved in that. Yeah, so it, um, it's John fun. has done some beer swaps with some of the people on there, um, and uh, we have some more beer incoming. Yeah, which is awesome. And uh, we're 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 actually uh, I just set up a, another beer trade with Jeff. We're yep. doing some they, more. They, they don't know yet. Oh, my bad. <laughs> well, it could have been for someone else. It, it was for I, someone I else. I didn't say yeah. anything. Yeah, yeah, we're we're setting up a beer trade. Oh. So, so yeah, there, there's a beer trade ongoing right now. Yeah, so but, we uh, we have we have stuff like that. So 
if uh, you want to join Discord and talk some beer, dot, you know, we can even do a liquor trade. Yep. LS on a Miata, but why? Oh my God. If you've never been in one or heard one, um, think 400 horsepower to the back wheels in a Miata. <laughs> um, you want to talk about the ultimate drift track, whatever you want to do car. That's it. <laughs> um, it it's basically a go-kart. Yeah. A, a big man's go-kart. Now, um, I've, I've driven a big man, but you know, a, right. an adult, it, it's a grown up. It's a, yeah, it's a, it's a grown up. Right. Um, so it's for, definitely not a big man's go-kart. So we'll get into a little bit of car talk here before we get into the news. Cause we've got an hour left. Oh, I know. Is it? Yeah. It's nine Oh three. Oh yeah. We still got an hour. We've been on for exactly one hour. Oh my gosh. It feels so long. <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure everyone caught that. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> um, so in November, I actually bought a 2003 Toyota MR2, which was an absolute kick in the pants to drive. It was fun. I even drove it. That was a fun car. Um, now, it's only 140 horsepower, um, but it's a mid-engine, rear-wheel drive. Um, and But that car could corner and drive like nothing else on the road or in anything that I've ever driven, really like motorcycles mm-hmm. included. That thing hugged every single corner and was a perfect balance. And it gives you an idea for what a Lotus Elise would be like because mm. they're the same chassis, yep. same build, actually same engine, but the Lotus Elise has Just 190 like, horsepower. And actually, you can get a supercharged one now for like, with, has like 240 horsepower oh, really? or even more. Um, actually, I think they had a, a turbocharged one that did 300. Um, maybe in the Exige. But anyway. It gives you an idea of what grown-up racing should feel like. Um, So, what should a car feel like on the road? How should a car handle in the corners? That's what a car should handle like. Um, Even in the MR2, which is the poor man's Elise, which is the poor man's race car, which is the, you know, go down the line. For for an $8,000 car, it's as close as you can get to an F1 car. Yeah, Uh, it's a fun car. Again, it's the go-kart. If you guys ever ever driven a very fast go-kart without the guy waving you down, like, no bumping! Yeah. The corners, it... it, you. you Oh, I totally pit maneuver people. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. (laughs) But, but, you know, if you turn, it turns. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to go 90 degrees. You go 90 degrees. Yeah. You're going 80 miles an hour, and there's a 30-mile-an-hour corner coming up. You're fine. You let off the gas, and you just take it. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah. And then hit the gas about halfway through and you go, yeah, yeah MR2s aren't good for tall people. That's why I don't own it anymore. <laughs> I'm, he, he was getting to that part of the story. I, I'm, I'm six foot four and I drove an MR2, daily drivered it. Uh, we have a couple months. Uh, from November until June. Yeah. Um, and so I, I, I owned it for six months. It was a fun car. Fun car. The problem is if I drove it for more than 20 minutes at a time, my back would start to hurt. Uh, I just wasn't comfortable in the car. Um, so I traded it in for a 350Z. Yep. Um, cause I figured all the big YouTubers have Z cars. I might as well buy it. Oh yeah. All, all the big, big YouTubers, YouTubers have Z cars. Have Z cars. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Coconut Monkey and, uh, Jay both have Z cars. There's a couple of those with Z cars too. <laughs> that was his only reason. Yep. Yes. His only reason. Uh, Regan says the Exige had the same motor as a Camry. Yeah. But the Camry weighed about 2000 pounds more. And wasn't rear wheel drive, and wasn't mid engine. So the balance was off. The power was in the wrong spot. Right. That that's like saying the Dodge Viper had a van engine. The yeah. Dodge Viper did not have a van engine. It shared similarities to a van engine. It wasn't a van engine or a truck <laughs> engine. It was a freaking Viper. Yeah. So give the car the credit that it's due. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, the Exige had a 300 horsepower Camry engine. You know what? That was a hell of a Camry engine. Those Camrys get up and go. Yeah. So. Yep. <laughs> yep. I'm, I'm going to stop there before I start yeah. ranting there, There's about more it. car stuff he can yeah. get into. Now we can I can totally get into it. Now, do you want to do questions? A couple people asked some pretty quick questions, but there was like... Uh, Let's see. Big tire budget and a 400 yeah. horsepower Miata? Absolutely. There probably is. What's your guys' favorite beer? You know, we've gone over that mm-hmm. uh, a couple times. Um to me, there I don't really have a favorite beer. I don't have one favorite beer that I can point at and go, "That's it. That's yeah. the one beer uh, that I want." And honestly, I've I, got a favorite of like each style. Yeah, and well, even that for me, it's and not, even it's a it's a it's a sliding scale. It's, yeah, it is a sliding scale because then there are variables on that. I, I'm not the type of person that I could drink that every day, all mm-hmm. day. I can't do that. Now, style, no. 
IPAs I could drink probably all the time. Yeah. Uh, I'll always go to it. For me... I, I can have an IPA six days out of the week. Yeah, but I don't think I could have the same IPA no, six days No, it has to be different, have to be... You know... Yeah. And my wife, she doesn't really like beer, but she doesn't mind trying them. Mm-hmm. Um, but she hates when I come home with the IPA variety pack. She's like, I hate IPAs. Well, like, mm-hmm. I wanted the variety pack of IPA. Right. Uh, yeah. uh, oh, oh, you got the... Uh, what, which one was that? Um, I bought a uh, the Nankasi IPA. Yep, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah it, it was four different IPAs. Uh, yeah. One of which came in a can instead of a bottle. Yeah, but I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah I'll take that. Sure, yeah. that's cool. Uh, I think I bought that box twice. But yeah, mm-hmm. it, but for for that, it's it's nice drinkable stuff. Now I love a good bourbon barrel aged stout. Mm-hmm. I love a really good sour. I I, I almost every style. Yeah, we're pretty. Yeah, okay, fine, sure. <laughs> Um, (laughs) uh, I I love pretty much almost every style. There are styles that I I don't prefer, but I love... To me, I just love drinking and and the experience of trying the new styles. I actually will go to tap rooms and bars and and look for the the one thing I haven't tried. I've never had that before. I've never had that. That's what I want to have. I don't care if it's bad or good. I want to experience what that brewery has to offer. Mm -hmm. Yep, and I do the same thing. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, uh, John and I share a lot of similar tastes, although we do have some different tastes. Oh, we do. I, 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 I'm a really big fan of, of a really good, genuine Belgian beer. Oh, yeah, he is. Um, uh, that, that is my... Uh, I, he, I, lo- I, he loves that, and a good German half or yeah. a good German beer. He's yeah. really... Those are his, like... If he can find those two, yep. those are his his great. Yeah, we're, I'll, I'll walk into a tap house, and if they have a German on tap that I haven't had before, that is number one. That yeah. is what I'm having, no questions asked. Um, I love stouts. I love porters. I, I love dark beer, and, mm. and the thicker the better. Um, and, and especially if you get bourbon mixed in there and you mix my two loves together. Oh, yeah. Uh, and this is quite a good beer. It is. It is like I said, it's a nice yeah. beer. Yeah. Uh, someone was saying, if you follow me on Twitter, all my Twitter posts are just, hey, this is what I'm drinking today. Yeah. 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 Follow John on Twitter, and it's like the menu at a tap house. <laughs> yeah. It's just, hey, I'm having this today. Hey, I'm having this today. Yeah. You'll see how much then I drink. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. Don't follow me on Twitter. <laughs> don't follow me on Twitter. Yeah, um, what's really funny is I, I like to make fun of the fact that people think that I drink a lot. I drink less than one drink per day. Yeah. I really do. I, I am not a heavy drinker by no. any means. Um, I probably average about five drinks a week. And that includes what I drink like on the side. Like I drink, and I'm not counting Wednesdays on this. Wednesdays I usually have two or three beers. It's a little bit different. Yeah. And 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 whatnot but i usually prepare for that i'm usually drinking nothing but water throughout the day i'm usually having a really heavy lunch and yeah, dinner yeah i usually have like something bread heavy yeah and something exactly. to absorb this yeah yeah you know i had a i had a burger and, although today we had uh chicken fajitas oh, for dinner so you know, that's fine good little mexican there yeah but uh but yeah on on like thursdays i won't have a drop and on saturdays i usually don't drink and on sundays i usually don't drink i i usually drink like I'll have a drink when I get home from work and it's usually like a cocktail with dinner or yeah. a beer with dinner and that's it either that or I'm filming and I have a beer with the film over like a two hour session Yeah. and people go oh my god every time I see you you have a beer right because this one hour snippet of my life is totally representative of me <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah no I follow so. philosophy of a beer a day keeps my heart pumping yeah <laughs> makes it work harder keeps yeah. it healthy yep yeah. <laughs> And then on the weekends, input that to three day, yep. three four day. Yeah, yeah. So unless uh, I'm on vacation, oh, then all bets are off. Oh yeah, yeah. Vacation, special occasion. God, I, 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 I took a week staycation uh, a couple of months ago, where I I just stayed home from work, and I woke up in the morning, and I came downstairs, and it's like, what do I want to do today? I want to go to the mall. I want to do this. I want to do that. And there's a couple of days you're staying home, and you come downstairs, Sorry. and you go, it's nine o'clock. I can have an IPA. Yep. <laughs> I've done that. Totally. I've done that. That's why they call that a breakfast day. Yep. Unless it's 9 a.m. <laughs> filming a video. I've actually done that too. Yep. I have come down... St- I've actually... Uh, the earliest I've had a beer was when I was filming a video for this channel. Yeah, wasn't it like 6 a.m.? I was going to say 6 I came 6. downstairs and for you all, I had a beer and it was like a... It was like a 9% IPA. Yeah. You are like, this is all I had in my fridge. <laughs> yeah. Um, what video was that? Trying to remember. It wasn't too late. It was like a couple months ago. Two or three months ago. 
Um, but uh, I, I came to, I woke up early one morning and it's like, well, either I can film tonight after the kids have gone to yeah, bed or I can get it in was when it the kids are still was, asleep. It, was it one of your wish ones? It wasn't the wish one. No. Um, but it was around that time. Yeah. It was around that, that April time frame. Yeah. Um, might've been the one right after the wish video. But anyway, I came downstairs and it's like, it's six in the morning. I could have a coffee. I could like kick around the day or I can get the video done and then edit it and not have to do anything tonight. So yeah. that's what I did. So I sat down and at 6.15, I'm cracking up in a beer and I'm like, wait a second. I have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Is this what alcoholism, alcoholism feels like? The slow slip into the abyss? Yeah. All right. Let's All get right. on to some more news. Some, some more news. That was 10 minutes of burning time. That was way more than... Was that only 10 minutes? That was 10 minutes. Oh my God. That was so 9 13. We've been on the, on the air for nine hour, or an hour an and hour, 11 minutes. Well, Shut up about that. <laughs> your door. Until you show up at 7.55, you're going to keep hearing it. <sighs> All right, whatever. Walmart uh, is yeah. trying to compete with Netflix and, and uh, Amazon, Amazon Prime, Prime for a battle of video superiority. <laughs> It'll never work. Oh, God. Well, uh, you know, I will say, the one thing I think Walmart has for them... So, yeah, Walmart is essentially kind of doing uh, Netflix, Disney... Uh, Flicks, I guess, whatever right. Disney's channel is calling theirs, uh, uh, Amazon Prime, Hulu. Walmart does have that Voodoo, mm -hmm. which was blatant ripoff of Hulu. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think a complete failure. Yes. Uh, because, wow, I'm paying $3 to rent this video where I could spend $9 a month. It's probably on Netflix right or now. Or spend 99 cents and rent it on iTunes. Or yeah, spend 99 or, cents and rent it on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Or go spend 99 cents and go rent it at the Walmart through the, one of the little... Uh, red, red, the red Yeah, the Red yeah. Box or Red Disc. Red, red Disc. Red, yeah. Red, red box. box. Red Box. You know, or whatever. Um, red Box. <laughs> we got it. So, uh, but a pair, it seems like uh, Walmart is going to be investing a bunch of money yes into their own uh premium streaming service uh but uh the interesting thing is what they're speculating is that the price point will be around eight dollars eight a bucks month. a month yep. eight bucks a month so it will be the cheapest one out there now i don't know how much well okay the, the from i'm betting the content that they're probably going to be providing i'm betting they're going to throw in the voodoo movie content i think they have to they have to i, I think it's going to be like voodoo light or something like that right um and i'm betting it's going to be ex exclusively movie at first mm -hmm. though walmart is mulling over an ad supported free service as well yes yeah i forgot about that uh yep. with commercials and everything yep. so that'll be interesting but then they're competing with like uh the, is it ABC? Mm -hmm. ABC has theirs. A couple of the cable series like FX has yep. theirs. Um, what well, to, where else can I watch Simpsons On Demand? Right, yeah. <laughs> it's not commercial free, though. Right, and then there's Comedy Central. Comedy there's, Central there's has theirs. Their, on demand. Uh, um, I think Sci Fi. CBS has one charges yeah. for it, the CBS Premium, CBS. where you can watch Star Trek Star Discovery Trek, if right? you uh, are into that. Uh, what, it's better than Enterprise. It's better than Enterprise. Not by much. That's not saying a lot. Mm -mm. His Enterprise wasn't good. It's better than the cartoon series. But at least that was voiced by the I'm original cast. I'm trying to cast. think of where I'm going to set that bar. That 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 was voiced by the original cast. Yeah. I'm I, Most uh, of the original cast. That's a hard one. It's better <laughs> it's better than Undiscovered Country. It's better than Star Trek 1. Yes, better than Star Trek. Oh, yeah. Totally better than Star Trek 1. Star Trek the movie. Sorry. That's yeah. the proper term. It's better than Star Trek the movie. Star Trek the motion picture. Oh, that's all right. My, the motion picture. My bad. My bad. You call yourself a Trekkie. Oh, shut up. You went with Undiscovered Country when you well know that the motion picture. When, when, yeah, I, I knew what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to call it back on me, John. <laughs> this is my show, damn it. I won't be talked down to. <laughs> Yeah. We're drinking Wesley Crusher beer here, so that's, that's fine. That's true. It's like, I'm, I'm wearing completely the wrong shirt for this. Yeah. <laughs> well, you have a couple badges we could be like wearing. I totally could. I've thought about coming on the show with one before. Yeah. What, you're going to like beam on here? Yeah. Have the glitter effect. <laughs> Oh. Uh, if you can't hear that train, we What can. is it doing on a Wednesday at 9 o'clock? I don't know. That's off schedule. Oh, that would be a cool water cooler if you can make it look like the beaming. Like, just have it jet down and not spiral and just loom around. I could do that. 
It would take some doing. I'd have to have a tube inside of it that had glitter and water, but then the water filters down around Filters it. down. Yeah. So it always just goes down. Yeah. Like kind of goes circles mm -hmm. around like that. So it always looks like someone. And then if you could put like an action figure in there, like yep. he's being halfway beamed, that would be cool. Ooh. Sorry. I'm going to interrupt with more car talk. Oh, someone's probably so, talking smack. So, no. Some of... Uh, the best names are on Discord. The Stig... <laughs> What? Do we got the stick? You you didn't see the stick? Oh my god. Yeah, we have the stick. We got the stick. Well, I have the stick on my Discord. Uh, if you ever come to the East Coast near Pennsylvania, you'll have to take a ride in my car. I have amazing back roads near me and a 600 horsepower car that I built from scratch. I think we're going to go to Pennsylvania. Let's do that. You want a beer trade? <laughs> <laughs> you pay for tickets, we'll bring the beer. Yep. Yep. Baseball's <laughs> the movie. That's good. It's not really. It's that's Star Wars. I would go with. Um, yeah. What was the Tim Allen one? Um, Star Quest. Oh, Star Quest. Star Galaxy Quest. Quest. That Galaxy Galaxy yes. Quest. That that's basically that's Star Trek. Galaxy uh, Quest until the reboot 2009 Star Trek was the best Star Trek movie ever. Oh yeah, wait, awesome. Yeah. It's still better than what were the last two? Uh, Darks. Uh, well, there was Insurrection. No, but what was oh. You know, the, uh, the, the last two. Into Darkness. Into Dark is better than that. Yeah. And, and the the other one with the... Beyond. Beyond had so much potential. It really did. And it just fell flat. Number one, we saw the Enterprise blow up for a third time in three movies. Every movie! Really, it's losing its effect. I, I think you have an, an unlimited budget. Why don't you just keep them in reserve? Um, and then stop giving Kirk control of the Enterprise because right? apparently he doesn't know how to not blow one up. <laughs> is, um, that, is it just this, like, oh, it's a cookie cutter ship. There we go. Right. We're not going to upgrade anything on it. Right. We're, oh, it keeps blowing up. That's fine. Yeah. The bridge looks oddly the same. It's well, like a well, they can before. stand a volcano eruption. It's true. So it's true. cool. It works. But what could have been an excellent movie, um, no technology, trying to defeat the bad guy, ended up being resurrecting a 1960s Harley for some reason, and the gas is still good, and they found it inside a ship that's been crashed for 100 years. That has Beastie Boys music that in has, it. That has Sabotage by yeah. Beastie Boys queued up and ready to go, yeah. and that's what kills the bad guys. Is Yeah, loud music. Really? <laughs> oh, it's a swarm of bees, and they all like... Like, like people give episode or uh, Star Trek Four Voyage Home crap for the whale song. Dude, no, that's the, the, one the that is the best. That's one of the best ones. Star Trek Four is amazing, and and it it still fit the context. Beastie Boys no. sabotage. No, no, I'm sorry. No. And you're literally the Enterprise was or the not so, the Enterprise yeah, yeah, the yeah. not the Enterprise yeah. that they resurrected from a hundred years the, ago. Yeah, the, the was surfing on the on these bees or what, the the ships no. that were like a swarm. Uh, that was like a warp two or warp three ship. Yeah, no. Warp three ship, I believe. No, terrible. Yeah, horror, horror. Terrible. I I don't think they're making another one. Uh, there's plans that it's going to go to a uh, TV a, a series, a TV series, which would be cool to see. <sighs> it's just going to ruin. Uh, it. There's actually six different projects in the works right now with Star Trek attached to the name. Yeah, I I, I remember that, and yeah. uh, I'm still waiting for Captain Worf. Yes. That would be great. I would I would watch that. Seriously, bring back a DS9 DS style. T TNG, DS9. DS9, TS9, or D TNG. D TNG, uh, even a Voyager-esque, you yeah. know, that's what I really like. Those oh. were still canon Star Trek. Yeah. Those, and, those were... And, and the whole, uh, the, the latest one, they're calling canon. It's like, that's not canon. No. 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 Important updates are pending for Jeff's laptop. Gosh darn it. Uh, do I pick a time, remind later, or restart now? Quick, everyone, vote! Microsoft, remind when me. do I use this laptop? Remind I'm pretty freaking <laughs> consistent about when I use this laptop. That was Is 9.25 on a Wednesday night the best time to update my laptop? <laughs> Vote now! <laughs> ah. Western Digital spinning down their hard drive division. See what I did there? Yeah, I, I saw that. Yeah, it's good. All right. Freaking Microsoft. <clears throat> By the way, if you guys want to sponsor Jeff, you can sponsor Jeff. Restart now just to troll him. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, so Western Digital announced earlier Tuesday, I believe it was. Yeah, uh, very 17th. Early, yeah, very, yeah, very early Tuesday. Um, that they are going to be shutting down their hard drive division. Well, what are, what are the, the biggest one they have, right? I their, thought, their spinning disk division. Well, is it the whole? I thought it was just one factory. Spinning disk. The whole spinning disk. Spinning disk. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So no longer the the big old boys. Right. Uh, well, no longer the mechanical no, boys. Well, no. I thought I thought the article talked about just their biggest factory of it that they will still have some, but I thought it was just the biggest factory that they have in Malaysia. Okay. Uh, th- that's uh, I may have I skimmed it really quick. Uh, yeah. And maybe I was wrong. I thought by the end of 2019 they were going to be phasing them out entirely. That's what I had. Well, I, again, I thought it's a because defa- they anticipate by 2020 that NAND is going to overtake mechanical for storage capacity and and efficiency and cost. Mm, yeah, well, I mean, I agree with all that, but it just, right. it just talked about the factory in Malaysia that it's going to. Right. End. I don't know if that's their is that their only factory. I believe it is for okay. mechanical drives. All right, and that's it's a it's a, a, a 1.7 million square foot facility yeah. in Malaysia. Um, it's a huge factory. Um. All about Mac Store. Mac Store? No. No. No, no Mac Store. I have never personally encountered more failed drives than Mac Store over their entire company history, dating back from 1994 all the way up to literally about a year or two ago. No, so th- this is a, 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 a million square foot facility, but they still have a 1.7 million square gotcha. foot facility. In Thailand. In, in Thailand. Okay. Uh, and yeah, so how uh, doesn't mean that the hard drive manufacturer is giving, giving up, up on Malaysia. Malaysia. Okay. Yeah, so it, it's it's I think it's just their largest factory. Gotcha. And they're shutting it down. But I do believe from that sounds, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised. They're at, ramping up. They're ramping the up to get rid of it, yeah. to get rid of it all, and just go SSD. Yeah. Uh, they were talking about that they also have a uh, contract with Toshiba mm-hmm. that they started with last year. Um, that basically is going to even expand on their SSD, but it's basically just going right. to keep them afloat with the SSD market. Yep. Um, for the TVs and, <laughs> and, and uh, smart TVs and, and other things. So we have to live with the crappy Seagate ones. No, they're still HDST, which is the former Hitachi division. Yeah. Um, and then there's and the uh, great thing is, no, if this does shut down, that means they're gonna have a surplus of it, and they're gonna go for cheap. Yeah, yeah. Um, see what what drive does, did I buy? I forget. What did I get? It's been so long since I bought these. HGST. That's right. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Um, video. As soon as I get around to it, I'm gonna be upgrading my my FreeNAS server to some six terabyte HGST drives. Um. These were actually refurb drives, but they're six terabytes. Um, they're, Sa- they're SATA 7200 RPM. I've got four of them and a new hard drive controller. So, Bad coming bad. video. And I really need to because I'm down to like 800 gigs free on my uh, on your server. On my server. This video production eats a lot of space. I'm telling you. Oh, this one's new. I didn't see this. Did you drop a bottle cap on I, the floor? It was like early on. Jeez. Scratch my wood floors. Oh yeah, they're not already scratched. <laughs> so I had a recline uh, back when this was our den, um, and the wood stove was actually functional, and we had a TV over here. You, you've never seen the wood stove, so why would they think you have a wood stove over there? There's, Look, the, there's a wood stove. Now you've in just my shown them half of your office. You've never shown that. Look at look at that. There's my workbench. Oh, that's actually clean with the batleth on the oh, wall. Yeah. Hell yeah. Look at that. And uh, the, what is that, two megabyte hard drive? Yep. Yep. Um, so yeah, there, there's my office. There's our camera. Yep. That's my uh, Sony a6000 with two, a Canon two, L-series lens on it. Two weeks ago, that area was covered in boxes. If you didn't see last week's oh, episode God. With, with Steve. It was bad. Where they talked about it. Yeah. But yes, uh, prior to last week, you had to like crawl over things and just uh, do yoga poses like over there. Right. Things. Just to get over the boxes in here. You had to hold a yoga pose and then rotate yeah. and then come back down. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was bad. I, I had probably close to 15 case boxes in here. Not the cases themselves, just the boxes, just the boxes. they came in. Yeah. Um, plus uh, a whole bunch of, of other just miscellaneous crap around the office. And it's like, screw it. I only, need, I only want what I need in here. Yeah. We were thinking about building a fort and everything yeah. like that. It was going to be great. <laughs> no girls allowed. Yeah. <laughs> Beer only. 
Powered by beer. Ah. It's 927. We may need to crack into my reserve. Yeah. I, hey, I, I bought two big beers. I thought you we were going to drink them slow. I thought we were going to drink them slow. We're and, slamming and, them down. Yeah. I should um, I mean, we can always crack open the ones that brought. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Those are We've had those on the show before. Yeah. Um, let me go grab something else out of the, out of the fridge. All right. Um, another big beer or another light beer? I don't care. You don't care? I don't care. I'm, I'm actually pretty good. I had a bit. We I, have that Norwegian one. Do you want to do that one now? It's a winter ale. I mean, it's your call. It's my call. It's your call. Let's I, see what I, I got on the fridge. Yeah, I, 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 and I don't mind having a repeat. Yeah. If if because I do understand the uh, saving of a good beer for special occasions. Uh, so if anyone wants to ask me any personal information or questions, now's the time. I love uh, Burnett's blonde. You know, I just love girls. That's cool. Cocktails, right? Yeah, cocktails. Hey, if you guys want us to have a cocktail recipe on the chat, quick, before oh, Jeff gets back. Cocktail. Someone's saying cocktail. Cocktail? Well, cocktail. They, they spelled it wrong, but hi from OZ. So these are the two that I have out in the fridge right now. Well, we have, we, we've, had this we've already had that one. I'm fine with that, and I'm fine with the cocktail. Yeah, I'm fine with the cocktail. I'm fine with the cocktail. Um, hot and thirsty here in PDX. It is hot in you, PDX. You know what? Have you ever had a proper whiskey sour? With uh, egg yolk? With egg white. With egg white? Yes, I have. I but I love a whiskey sour. Let's do a whiskey, whiskey sour. Whiskey sours are fantastic. What's your social? Like social media? Oh, uh, my social media is... You can follow me on Untapped Twitter, Facebook. Yeah. So we'll <laughs> or Instagram. Cry. All those will be hot and brews. Check my information in the comments below. <laughs> they, will not, they won't be on this one. That's just my spiel at the end of my stuff. That... Don't forget the egg. I only have organic eggs, Jeff. I'm sorry. If it's not farm fresh organic brown. Don't brown, even give it. Really? Don't even give it to me. You going brown on me? Yeah. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. you're gonna get. Keep showing. You're gonna. Apparently, you're gonna get kicked in the balls by Penny. You keep showing that bat list. Oh. I don't. Who's I don't. Penny? I don't know who Penny is. Yeah. Are we talking Penny Arcade? Because I, I haven't watched, read that in no. literally probably close to a decade. All right, so people are happy we're having cocktails. Okay. Oh, I've got ice. Bring on the bullet. Uh, egg or organic. Uh, double A, large white. Good. They're eggs. They're eggs. They'll be fine. Don't worry about it. You, if, okay, so if you've never tried VR before, uh, Jeff actually does a really good beginner's VR video. Uh, it was a VR on a budget, I believe, wasn't it? Yeah, it was uh, uh, VR for under $1,000. Yeah, VR for under $1,000. So that uh, he talked about getting the headset and the computer all for under $1,000. Actually, I think it was like $30 it's over, over uh, is what you did. Yeah. But uh, you, and then also on, if uh, so check out that video. Uh, if you, I think it was only a couple weeks ago that you did it. Uh, about a month, month oh, and a half. Yeah, so go check it's, that video out. Uh, Jeff talks about uh, a really good on the budget VR system. Uh, I believe you used the Microsoft uh, VR setup for that. Yeah, the uh, Windows Mixed Reality. Windows it was Mixed actually Reality. this headset here. Yeah, the Windows and um, was it Asus that you we posted the article about earlier, or was that the Windows Mixed logo that we was on sale? Uh, yeah, Acer had a uh, Windows Mixed Reality headset. Refurbished though, it was a refurbished, refurbished but for 150 bucks. 150 bucks. It's I, I actually I checked that earlier today. It's still on sale. Yeah. Um, go Google that if you can find it. Uh, if you're part of Jeff's Discord or Patreon, you can see the link on there. So go check that out. Um, really, it comes down to really what you want to do, um, and all that stuff. So, yeah. Uh, Vlad gave us five bucks. Nice. Uh, I can't read. It's pretty bright. So I'll okay. tell you. Vlad, I always have to pre-read it. Hold on. I know. <laughs> so, so. Okay. When you're finished flipping through pages of escorts and you've made your choice, cross-reference the images with Google. Stay safe, bros. <laughs> always good advice this from Vlad. This life pro tip brought to you by Vlad. Yeah. All right. So we are going to do a proper whiskey sour. Um, I'm going to use a uh, Bullet 95 rye. And the recipe calls for two and a half ounces. So I'm going to do a double batch here. Do 
Hey, are those the uh, Death Star ice cubes? Yes. These uh, aren't the Death Star. Oh, they're not? They're I just have, spheres. I have the Death Star. So basically, five ounces goes in my tin. That's almost all your... Well, that's about half your whiskey. Yeah. It's good whiskey. It's good whiskey. Bullet 95. Good stuff. So, Bullet 95 rye. We're going to do... haven't even opened this yet. Words of Wisdom by Vlad. You know, actually, I haven't seen Vlad on the uh, uh, chat recently, the Discord. I don't think he's in the Discord. Vlad, how are you and not you? He how, donates money during the show. He's he, not in the Discord, though. I know. Well, how come he just doesn't automatically get it? We should just make him an honorary free member. I thought about it. Keep pushing, Vlad. An extra $20. Okay, then about one ounce of lemon juice. And I'm using just straight up lemon Standard. juice that you buy from Walmart. Yeah. Um, you can fresh squeeze a lemon and an ounce of lemon juice in there, but... Uh, Clearly, that's concentrated yep. lemon juice, but fle yep. fresh is usually probably better. Okay. And it calls for one egg white. We're doing two egg whites because I'm doing a double batch here. So no yolk. So no yolk. So don't drop the yolk in there. That would be bad at this point. There we go. And I want to do this to freak people out that I'm putting egg egg in a in a drink. <laughs> nah, it's fine. Yeah, it just makes it creamy. Egg yolk is or uh, yeah, egg white is fine. Yolk is what really. Well, there's still E. coli That's concerns. Fine. No, it's not. Not it's not. It's not organic. That's what my wife says. It's like as long as you don't use the farm fresh yeah. eggs, it's just <laughs> it's the E. coli. It's stuck because it's stuck the I show broke. I know it is. Get out of there. We'll have a little bit of Jeff's, Jeff's nail in there. There we go. There we go. Close enough. All right. I'm going to piss my wife off by putting... What's the uh, Discord? Uh, Discord, Je Vlad, is uh, basically Jeff's Patreon. We chat all day. We bullshit around. Words of wisdom go all the time, all day yes. long. Around. They are more than welcome. It. And now they're freaking out about the eggs. <laughs> <laughs> and you want to shake this well. Yeah. Well, you want that foaminess from the, the, the egg whites will give it the foam. You know what? We, you still haven't finished your beer. Yep. And I also didn't add the uh, simple syrup. I just realized that. No sweet. Oh, oh, there goes the egg. Oh, there goes my hand. Well, part of the egg. That's right. I forgot. Three quarter ounce of simple syrup. Which is just sugar and water. Yep. Boiled and down. And you can make it yourself. Yep. Yep. Don't buy simple syrup. It's Forgot. stupid. It, it's literally granulated sugar boiled into water. Yep. One to one. Uh, yeah, it's one to one ratio. 30 minute boil, something like that. Actually, I think I believe it's just as soon as it starts boiling, turn off. Yeah. Yeah, you want it to like simmer. And, yeah. And that's it. Or even like 190 degrees. It doesn't have to be that warm. No, you just really want it to melt. And then uh, by the time it becomes room temperature, you have that viscosity, that thickness you want. Viscosity, sorry. Not viscarity. That's not even a word. Viscarity? That's not even a word. The viscosity. I corrected myself. Up there. My ice is stuck at the bottom. There it goes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> These aren't the best. I didn't get the most foam on it. Probably because I made a double batch. Yeah, it's fine. I'm going to get a napkin real quick. Right, the liquor should kill anything in the egg. Actually not true. No, because it's not, uh, it's only 40, 45? It's, for, it's, it's 42 and a half. 42. It's not, it's not that long enough. It's not an instant killer. It's only 90, uh, yeah, it's 40, no, it's 45. So it's 45. I thought you needed like uh, 60. No, it'll, it'll still kill it, but it takes like long. a day to be in contact with it to kill everything. Uh... Backrat 777, proper whiskey sour. That is basically what Jeff was promising me was a proper whiskey sour. That's right. I've had a proper whiskey sour. They are fantastic. I love whiskey sours. I love uh, old fashions. And I love... Um, God, oh, God. Manhattan? Not Manhattan. It's it's, it's um, a, a, a gin sour beer. Oh. Um, anyway. Thanks, sir. There's... Uh... A half-hazard half whiskey hazard. sour. It's fine. Improvised whiskey sour. Because that's what you get on a uh, two-minute timeline. And <laughs> I have to, like, go four different locations in my house to make one. So, whiskey Cheers. sour. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. Cheers. 
Ah, oh, that's good. Gimlet. Ah, so those are the top of it looks like. Normally I don't use the round ice cubes, but I felt like it. But uh, you put a little bitters on top of there. Yep. Ooh, it's nice. Yeah, like a, a lime Yummy. gimlet. Yeah. A lime gimlet. I love lime gimlet. Yep. Uh, Jen, I actually had this one this past weekend. They did a lime gimlet with a fresh basil and mint. Mm -hmm. It was fantastic. I was like, I've never. They had a little. They like finally chopped the basil and mint, and they finally chopped um, some uh, lime into it, and so it came with little chunks of it on top that mm -hmm. floated. It was like, wow, this is fantastic. Yep. That's um, the amarillo sour. No, amaretto stone oh, sour. There we go. Um, uh, there's an amaretto stone sour that I like, but I'm looking for a drink that I had a couple of nights ago, actually with Rhett. We went to a bar in downtown Salem. Um, one of my favorite... Archive? Uh, it wasn't Archive, actually. Oh. We, we went to another place before Archive. Before we went to the speakeasy at Archive. Mm. Oh, you were with Rhett there? Yeah. Yeah, as soon as you posted that picture, I know where you are. I know where you are, yeah. <laughs> And I knew you would. Um, <laughs> but uh, one of my favorite drinks is a godfather it's scotch and amaretto yeah um i'm not a big amaretto fan i know you're not um but anyway it's one part scotch one part amaretto and people go ah oh, you're mixing scotch yes i'm mixing scotch because it's freaking delicious um but uh there's a variation on that where you can add orange juice to that and that's called the uh, uh crap what's the name of that <laughs> <laughs> i forget it's like um, opening anyway, up his Twitter they, feed right now. Uh, I was at a bar with Rhett, and they had, they called it a night owl, but it's not a night owl, because a night owl is a variation on a Manhattan, not a variation on a Godfather. This was mm. a variation on a Godfather, where it was whiskey, amaretto, orange liqueur, and triple sec. Oh. And it was freaking delicious. Um, and I made one for myself at home, because I have enough in my bar to do that. <laughs> 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 and I nailed it on the first try. It's like, yes! So... Anyway, uh, this is a whiskey sour. Um, and Jeff never finishes beer. That's right. Well. Yeah. Now you're going to have a chocolate whiskey sour. Mm -hmm. Chocolate pecan, one quarter bourbon barrel aged, and whiskey sour. Just transitioning to the, to the rye in this. There you go. That's right. Yeah. Um, so two and a half ounce whiskey. You can do one ounce of lemon juice, uh, three quarter ounce simple syrup. Shake it with an egg white very vigorously. You'll get this nice foam on the top. Use some better ice than I did. Um, I just used my round ice, which I usually use for old fashions. It doesn't really work well with this because you want to layer the top of the foam with some bitters. And yeah. If you want to get really fancy, you can swirl it with a toothpick. Um, typically garnish with a cherry. Um, just You can either drop a cherry in or put one on a toothpick, drop it in. Um, but fantastic no. drink. Yeah, prefer it without the cherry. Yeah. I prefer it with that drink. No, it's a it's a it's a great summer drink. Uh, usually my go tos are either whiskey sours or uh, old fashions when I'm mm -hmm. at home late at night. I'm yep. like I don't want I don't want a beer. I'm kind of in the mood for a cocktail. Yep. And uh, <laughs> majority of the time it is old fashioned. Yeah. Uh, whiskey sours are next, and like I said, uh, kind of a, a lime gimlet or a gin lime gimlet. I, I don't really have too much gin because uh, I I do have basically the only gin cocktails I have are that and a. Uh, gin and tonic yep so i kind of go with a vodka lime gimlet. yep uh there's the gordon's cup which i made a couple of months ago for an episode and that was uh gin lime and cucumber and that's oh yeah it. And that's yeah. it and it was that like was, and were, that was good you as were well. saying like yeah because you saw the recipe from yeah. um uh, how to drink yep how to from drink. greg yep yep um but yeah this one is uh very good you can also make this into an amaretto sour which you do one and a half ounce of amaretto and one ounce of whiskey, and the rest of the ratios are the same. Um, and you get a much more sweeter drink, a little little more nutty, earthy flavor to it. But still very, very good. I'm trying to get the bitters to swirl. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a, every, everywhere I go, at least I get a little bit of that little yeah. bitter. And what's funny is the bitters in this drink are more for your nose. Yeah, it is. Well, I mean, I actually do taste a little bit. It, you can it, taste it, a little bit of if it. You taste, if you take a small drink and yeah. you're tasting just basically like the foam and a little right. bit, you do taste a little bit of bitter. Yep. Um, so, um, so, okay, well, we actually wasted a lot of time there. Yeah, that's right. All right, so. Are, do you just want to go to Q&A or do you want to keep going with articles? Um, what else do we have for articles? So we got this. We got, we got the Google Fine. We got the Apple GPU. We can skip that one. That was stupid. We can skip that one. Which this is one was funny. I, uh, 
But uh, uh, whatever. Uh, this this one, I just I don't know. It, it's interesting. You posted this. This was I think the last thing you we posted. Yeah. Um, we or, can talk about this real quick, and then we'll go into a quick Q and A. All right, that's fine. Um, so a little bit of gaming for PAX. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so hey, we do talk games here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Zvariant, I believe is how you pronounce his, his company name. Uh, yeah, is it Variant? Exavariant. Exavariant, I think, yeah. Ex, 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 Zvariant or Exavariant, yeah. whatever the hell. I don't care, I don't know him. Whatever, um, it anyway, wasn't that great of a game. They had one of the original Battle Royale games uh, in The Culling. And it was actually pretty popular on Steam until the advent of PUBG and until the further advent of Fortnite. Yeah, so like um, 2016, I think the right. calling, the calling, not the yeah. calling, not the ban from the early the, 2000s. The culling. The culling. Culling. C U L L I N G. Yeah. Uh, what you do to chicks. <laughs> They've been culled. <laughs> so stupid. Okay, yes, so the second time. <laughs> what happens to the male chicks? They get culled. They get culled. Um. So they just released... Where chicken nuggets come from. Look it up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, All so, right, I'm back on topic. Yeah. So, uh, Xavier, Xavier School of Not-So-Good Games. Um, the Culling 2 came out, what, about a week ago? Not even that. Uh, uh, close to a month. Close, close to a month. Yeah. Uh, and and so this battle royale that the Culling One had was kind of cool. It, it wasn't that good of graphics. It was but it okay. had some decent gameplay. But it has yeah, exactly. It had some decent. Had some cool just like retro punk uh, crowbar, mm-hmm. some cool guns, yep. street fighting style. Um, it was relatively cheap too, for I remember on Steam. Like five bucks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So so everyone kind of bought into it. Yeah. And kind of followed it before like you were saying PUBG and yeah uh, at at one point they were getting concurrent access of like mm -hmm. 200,000 users on it so it was a great great pretty pretty high numbers for Steam um relatively relative yeah exactly Um, I mean you're you're never gonna be some of the, some of the you're not a battlefield there, but, you're not a Call of Duty but but at the same time it 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 was a good game yeah for five Um, bucks so the Culling 2 came out to Dismal. I, I, I'd say boisterous applause, but that'd be like three guys in a room going, "Yeah!" yeah! Um. So the Culling Two was released. I, I think about three weeks ago, something like something that. like that. Anyway, um, its peak performance was 249 concurrent users, and actually tr- uh, came all the way down to zero over like a. An entire hour, but basically it's been single digits, and it's averaged six yeah. since its release. <laughs> so, not they, not good numbers. No, not good numbers. So, uh, they they pulled it. Yeah, they pulled it from uh, everything. Yeah. Ever, have, did you watch the video? The yeah. oh, God, he he. I felt sorry for the guy. I, I do too. I, I mean, it almost like he basically he. It almost seemed like he took a couple shots beforehand and was just like. Guys, all right, all right we gotta do this. Okay, we gotta do Guys, I'm sorry. Here's how this went. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and he's like, no one even asked for this video game, and we released it anyways. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I didn't pay attention to anyone. And, it, yeah, it was bad. But I think, I don't know if this is like a record for a game falling out of Steam or not. No, it's probably not. Not, uh, a, not a record. As maybe, far as people not buying it. Well, I, I think, well, as fast, what about being pulled? Whew. No, probably not even then. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, it's but been yeah. out. It's been out for about a week. I thought it's been longer than that, but no, it's been about a week. So it was released and no one played it. Yeah. Um, and uh, and and at one point it even had one concurrent user. So there's one guy in a lobby one. going, "I'd really like to play this one guy." Yeah. <laughs> We're the bots. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, they they. Went on social media and and they said we're sorry. Yeah, oh, yeah. Here's the, the game thing. is yeah. not very good. Yeah, and we apologize. So what we're going to do is re-release the culling as basically an early release title. We're going to go back to to the culling the, one. The one. We're going to call it the culling day one, and we're going to try again. Well, and they also said that they're going to reboot it and be free. Yeah, and kind of basically like the PUBG and all the other stuff. And like, look. We, this this is the only way we're going to be able to compete is we have mm-hmm. to make this free to the fans 
that like the original mm -hmm. or and so we have to make it free for everyone right and you know maybe if they even did like a graphics update or something i don't know yep. or, or, or throw a couple of uh new packs in there uh right. weapon packs or some i don't know I, whatever new features maybe they put into two throw those into one yeah i i, I, I don't yeah i i didn't play two and i actually didn't play one no so enough. um that's kind of i was like i didn't play this so jeff i'm hoping you played this but nope never did yeah never did Yep. It didn't. It didn't. Even when I looked up the trailers for the original one, uh, it got I think three and a half stars was the highest rating it got. Uh, graphics mm -hmm. looked a little blocky to modern day time graphics, um, but I, I think it was just a, a niche thing and uh, an all out brawl. At the time, the original one was released was just a new concept, a newer concept of just that big open world brawl. Mm -hmm. So. Yep. Are you zoning out again? No, I'm I'm catching up on some Discord chat. Oh, okay. I was listening to you too. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I caught you Open were... World Brawl. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm not... I'm tuned in. Uh, Bono or me? You. Me too. Yeah. Not you too. Me. Not too. you too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is why I'm personality number two. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Because he can keep the conversation going. Stephen Rhett, I kind of got to like have a cattle prod under you the You know, desk. they're, they're, no. <laughs> Say something. It's, it's actually not bad. With both of them, it's, if you watch their videos, Steve's my brother, so you can stay fair. <laughs> but no, uh, it, it is like. Have a couple it, beers, John. Tell us how you really feel about yeah. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> no, Steve, it, it's like, you know, at the end of the episode, it's like, they're talky, talky, talky. Mm -hmm. You know, it's great. Mm -hmm. And it's fantastic. And, and we, we actually, we all have our strengths. We yes. really do all have our strengths. Yep. Uh, and if you actually do pay attention to the uh, shows, the articles that are posted, they're focused on different things, really. That's exactly right. And, I uh, try to do that on purpose. Yeah, because we all have our strengths. So go back and actually take a look at some yeah. of these videos and the, and the thing. And if you research the news around that time... I am more of a mastermind than you think yeah. I am. D just <laughs> as a dance puppets. Dance puppets. <laughs> And he's like, bring me free beer. Ha, That's right. Ha, ha. That's right. So I will text them on like Tuesday, Tuesday morning before the show and say, so, hey, what are we drinking this week? <laughs> to kind of incentivize them to think about what they're going to buy yeah, and bring me. Exactly. It's like, oh, not that what I have. It's yeah. more of what are you bringing me to be on my show? Now, it works three out of four weeks. <laughs> yeah. Most of the time, though, with me, it's... I. I have a plethora yeah. of beers. John so. has a lot of beer. He's always up I'm, for one. I'm hour. always up. And, and he's a, he always brings a lot. Yeah. Um, Rhett comes over, and, and we're usually like 50-50 on Rhett, where Rhett will bring a really good beer that I've wanted to try, and I'll have a really good beer that he wants to try, and that one's like an even playing field. Yeah. With Steve, Steve will bring a beer over, and then he drinks half my whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, that's, that's your own problem right there. But... Uh, the problem is with Steve is Steve shows up at like 7.20. And so typically before the show, we'll do a shot. And so we're already a little loose getting into the show. And then we'll drink our two to three beers or two to three drinks, whatever it is. But then Steve, we will stay talking until like midnight, one o'clock. And, and he'll go over to the, to the liquor cabinet and he'll grab a bottle that he wants to try. And he'll pour it so he's a drink. And we'll sit there and sip that. And we get a little looser. And then we'll pour a little more yeah. and we get a little looser. And before we know it, it's one in the morning. It's like... I have to work at seven. Yeah. And I've had nine shots now. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly. So I, I invite. And it's yeah. great. I actually. I, a lot of my. Almost all of my brothers. I'm actually the youngest of seven. Mm -hmm. I have. I have. Four older older brothers and two older sisters, yep. and they're all fun to drink with. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm drinking with four of them. Yeah, so <laughs> they're basically all like Steve. Of yeah. once you do it, whether you're into tech, whether you're into whatever, but it's just fun to. We're those type of people that just like we're communal. Fun, communal. Yeah, we're, we're communal drinkers, and yep. we just we love talking and drinking. And so when Steve comes over to my place to shoot like one video. Somehow we end up shooting three or four videos. Yeah. <laughs> and video three is welcome to Hot yeah, well, John, oh, yeah. I think. Go, go, go watch the videos where my brother Mike, Mike. Who, who's up from LA, <laughs> yeah. we stayed there and he was like, hey, what's the rarest stuff? Or what's the highest ABV you have? Okay. And then after video one, let's do another one. Okay. Another 12%er. Let's do another one. And in between each one, because. 
And by the way, each of his shoots only lasts about 30 minutes. Yeah, they only last... So we pound them down quick. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, my shoots last about an hour. So yeah. when you're watching me drink a beer it's, and you're like going, "Oh my god, you drink so much beer!" It's actually pretty. I drink a pace. pint at an hour. Yeah. So I I drink like tw- and a lot of times my videos are like I'm drinking a 22 by myself. Yeah. Uh, and I drink it within 20 to 30 minutes. Yeah. Um, or if I'm with Steve or or, or someone else, I'm usually having a, a 12 percenter or 11 percenter with someone else. So I'm still drinking 11 to 12 ounces. Yeah. Of a high double digit alcohol, yeah. quickly, um, and then we end up having a second or third video. Mm-hmm. And in between those, though, my brothers, I had a kegerator right next to me, and they're all pouring themselves extra beers. I'm yeah. like, yeah, let's do another one. <laughs> Woohoo! Oh, what whiskey you have Cause, here? Because what do you have? Six beers on tap? Uh, I well, so or four. I, I forget what your kegerator is. No, actually, so total, I can do ten. Ten. That's right. I can do yeah. ten. Uh, I right now I only have two going. Okay. Right now. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's been a little slow with the kid and yeah. the transitions of, of selling the bar and and everything like that. So, but uh, yeah, I can I can do a total of ten, and then I have two bottle machines full, mm-hmm. and then I have a bunch of beer underneath my house yep. cellaring. Yep. So I have I have hundreds. Maybe even a thousand dollars worth of beer yeah, at any given at point. any given point. Because we'll go over and we'll drink a hundred dollars in beer, and then uh, we'll go spend another hundred dollars. I'll go spend that. Yeah, oh, all right, I already went to the store today. Yep. Spent like so. Want to hit comments real quick? LOL, Bat with Prod, <laughs> dance puppets. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, have you ever taken the tr- the Zeke to any, or have I taken the Zeke to any track days yet? I have not. We don't really have tracks. We around. don't have many tracks around here. I have done some ca- some canyon carving with the Z car. Yeah. Um, I find myself taking the back road a lot more, which the back roads around here are amazing. Um, we get some really really. Yeah, good we, stuff. we we do have some nice windy country roads. Yes. Which are really nice because there's a lot of straight, mm-hmm. which you can really just just right. do what the, you the, want. There, there's some two and three mile straights, which are really nice. In fact, on my way to work, there's a seven mile straight. Yeah. And, and then, which all, is just literally straight. You can see to the end of seven miles. And which is really stupid because then there's farmland. And then for some reason, like, Hey, let's throw a bunch of twists and turns into right. this farmland, which is straight, but we're having to put twists and turns in. <laughs> well, there, there's a really funny story. Um, I don't know if you've ever taken the highway between Eugene and Florence. I forget which highway that no. is. <laughs> um, I believe it's one Oh five or something like that. Anyway, the highway between Eugene and Florence, Oregon. And and Florence is on the coast. Um, and, oh, yeah. And okay. Florence meets yeah, up yeah, yeah. With, with Highway 101. Okay, yeah. All, all that's I've done 101. Right. Um, anyway, that highway used to follow the river, which lands in Florence and dumps out into the ocean. Yeah. Um, what was funny is maybe 15 years ago or so, they decided to straighten that road out. Yeah. And so what they did is they just like drew a straight line between Eugene and Florence and they paved it. And so that that highway is like needle straight now. But you can still see the old highway and how it weaves around that road. And so you'll have the straight line of asphalt and then this asphalt that does this going all through it. <laughs> like snakes it. And and so every once in a while there's this like offshoot of the road that goes off this way and you're like what the hell is that? Oh, that's the old highway. <laughs> But yeah, exactly. For the old reason. highway was fun. The new highway, I'm in six going. But again, it, it's Oregon. I don't know. For some stupid reason, it's like, oh, let's go through some farmland and let's make a bunch of S turns. Mm-hmm. And honestly, it's probably because we got to use up all this concrete and, and, and our budget. No, what it is, is their their acre patches. Oh. And so what they do is they have to go around those farmlands. Oh. But the farmlands weren't weren't drawn in perfect squares where all of these lines meet and all of these lines meet. They're offset. And so you have to go around these farmlands. And so we have a lot of like 90s leading into 90s around this area. Yeah. So it's always like prepare for a 30 right. mile an hour turn. No. Um, anyway, have I taken the Z card any track days? I... I, I do plan on tracking the Z eventually. Um, there, there's a couple of, of tracks on the West Coast that I want to make. The only one really in Oregon is PIR, Portland International. And there are some track days I can take in on that. Um, the problem is I'm in a roadster. Um, and so there's some extra things that I have to go through. I, I definitely have to wear a helmet. I'm going to have to have a harness. And I may have to do a couple of things to the car to make it track ready. Would so you have the, to put a roll kit? You wouldn't have to put I would. I, well, that's debatable. Yeah, I, I, um, I, I don't know if you'd have to do I it I don't know if I do or not, but the, since it's a roadster, there's some other things that I'd have to do to make it track ready. 
Um, I do eventually want to make it down to Laguna Seca. I want to drive that track. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to meet up. I'm, I'm going to find a group that rents the track that I can go drive that track because mm. I will drive Laguna Seca in this car. You've done it enough virtually. It, it's one of my favorite tracks in the world. And I've never done it physically, but I will do it physically eventually. Oh, yeah. No, uh, so Jeff used to... So when I owned the tap room, we used to... Jeff, uh, I had a, a mezzanine area mm. above my bar. And Jeff would host a VR um arcade essentially and then yep. once a month we would do a track day because jeff built this awesome sweet <laughs> racing rig for vr stuff and uh what was it what was the game uh project cars project cars totally. yeah so we did project cars and we had just a bunch of like wannabe drivers or car enthusiasts and laguna was like one of the top tracks we always yep. did yeah um i think we did that with the ariel adam yep yeah, and that, that car, again, go-kart, but super no, go-kart. No, I think that one was the Lancer. The Lancer Evo all-wheel drive. Was it? Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, but anyway, um, have you hit the limit around the Z? What's the fastest you've gone? I'm less about top speed. I'm more about canyon carving. I, I love a good backcountry road where I can keep it at like 60, but do 60 around 25 mile an hour corners. That's what I'm about. Here, a little squeak in the tire. Right, a little squeak in the tire, a little break and loose at the back end. That's what I'm about. Uh, I'm, you I'm not feel a, a little sly, but not much, not out of right, control. Right, exactly. I, I like to be in control of my car. Um, but uh, anyway, I have done, I took Steve for a little backcountry road this last weekend. Allegedly, allegedly, I was shifting into third gear at 84 miles an hour. I didn't hear that. I no one heard allegedly, that. Allegedly, allegedly on a road so, on a road that's forty five. Yeah. Allegedly, um, uh, not much beyond that. I, I've I've done I've done ninety in it. I haven't gone fast that. And and again, I'm I'm not about the ultimate top speed. That's not where my adrenaline gets me. Like, my adrenaline gets me in the corners. Well, doesn't it only top out like one forty five? Yeah, and yeah. and even then the limiters at like one twenty five. Yeah, so. and so it's like, yeah, I could take it beyond that, but what the hell's the point? Yeah, no, and, um, and, and but that's a point to to where it's not about that. And if you something happened to that, because by the time you push it to that, the something could happen in the engine. Mm -hmm. You know, a valve could break, a tire could pop, any, right. anything. And it's not about that. It's about having fun in the car. Yep. What is so, oh is that skull? Oh, I thought that was Vlad. Uh, skull, ten dollars, uh, partly to replace the bullet rye that's already been consumed. Thanks for the highlights of the week. Woo, woohoo, skull! And thank you for the beer recommendation, skull. That's right. No, it was Reverend. Oh, was, was it? That, Reverend? that was Reverend. The hop. Well, my bad. But skull drinks some good beer too. I'm not gonna lie. He does drink some good beer. Him and I have actually done a beer trip. That's right. So. Yeah, Reverend was the Hoptimum. Okay. Uh, Skull's got some good stuff, though, too. No, Skull's got some good stuff. He's actually got some local stuff that I've sent him. Yep. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Yep. Um, you did this in Mexico, correct? Absolutely. I drove down to Mexico to do that speed. Yep. Woodburn. <laughs> um, Which is where I live. That's right. <laughs> So anyway, um, yeah, I've, I've done about 90 in it. I don't really need to go any faster. It does just fine. It, it could go 110, 120 very easily. Um, but for me, it's about 60 in the corners. That's that's yeah. that's where I feel the adrenaline at. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, sounds like rally culture would suit me. Absolutely. I love rally driving. Oh, it'd be fun. You know, oh, God, we should do the Gambler 500 craft computing. Yeah. Yeah, five hundred bucks. Have you? Do you know what the Gambler Five Hundred? Yeah. yeah, we should. Do. So the Gambler Five Hundred is a race here in Oregon. Yep. It is basically you're only allowed a budget car of five hundred dollars, or mm -hmm. basically you got to buy. You can put whatever money you want afterwards, but you have to buy the car for five hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. um, so there's some people that come with a five hundred dollar car and an LS swap and some different and some different suspension. On yeah, it. exactly. <laughs> most most of them here in Oregon are actually pretty true to the five hundred, and they just do a homemade tune up. Yeah, is usually what most of them do. Yeah. Um, and then it's 500 miles yep. uh, through pavement, desert, rock, yep. forest, mud. Yep. Uh, it's a two-day trip, but it's free to do, free to enter. And halfway through, actually, it was early Austin. There's a big cake raider barbecue party that they threw at the end of the first Gambler day. Gambler 500 fan meetup. Yeah. That would be fun. That would be fun. So actually, uh, a couple of my friends that uh, Vagabond, Ratchet, I think yep. he's doing it this year. Yep. A couple of my friends are brewers. They do it. Um, it's really fun. I've always wanted to do it. Get like a four-wheel drive, like Astro Van or something like that. That would be fun. And put like a keg in the back. Yeah. Um, and like, woo! Just 
it's drunk driving essentially what you're allowed to do. Yeah. Um, because they they're like encouraged, but you yeah you have to I think have three or four members. Yeah. To to drive the whole entire time, and then you also have to hook your car up to be towable from the front and back. Yeah. Something like that. But yeah. There's a couple of requirements. To there's it, a- but. It sounds fun. It, it, yeah, it's just super, super fun, and it's coming up really soon. Yep. I really wanted to do it this year, just didn't get to do it. Maybe maybe, ne- maybe we'll do a craft computing team next year. Maybe we'll do a craft computing We got four people. We, we got four people. people. We can do that. We and can then, totally do uh, it. Yeah, maybe we throw like a... Intel or a AMD Ryzen to uh, monitor our heat of the car. <laughs> Build. Now seeking sponsorship for the Gambler right? 500. Yeah, there we go. That would be totally cool. That would be fun. And then because we, there's actually like four wrecking yards within driving distance of oh, yeah. that I could we, go we could and totally, I could get a running car for like we, 200 bucks. Yeah, exactly. We could do that. Craigslist, there's lots of times yeah. they're like, hey, here's my four-wheel drive. It, it yep. needs a, a, a new something, which is like a, a $20 fix. Yep. Or a $50 fix. Ooh, I will save up and try to do it senior year. Oh, that, that hurts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's... I forget how young some of my fans can be. <laughs> Regan, I, I love you, by the way. I love you. I love you on Discord. You're amazing. But it, it hurts because it reminds me how young some of my oh fans can be. Oh, God. No, it, it, it's, no, it's... So, as far as age goes, uh-huh. it goes Rhett, you, me, and Steve. Yeah. Yeah, I'm the second youngest Yeah, on he's the, the second youngest. Yeah. And I, then the... Well, there's there's Steve, there's Steve, and then there's me and you. Me, me, yeah. And then there's Rhett way behind us. Oh, God, To yeah. be honest. Yeah, then that is actually, to be honest, you and I are real close. We're, we're like eight months apart yeah, or something so like we're, that. Yeah, so we're not that yeah. far apart. But uh, so Steve's a bit, and Rhett's a bit. Yeah, <laughs> a bit. Rhett. <laughs> Rhett's more than that. No, he's not. Two? His still starts with a two. Oh, yeah. Red still starts with a two. Yeah. Starts with, and Steve starts with... Starts with a four. Two, two of those twos. Yeah. So we're in the middle. Although, we, we got that dem- we hit that demographic. That's so right. We're, we're all in there. That's so right. We just need a high schooler. <laughs> I, I can't trust yeah, them. Yeah, right? Well, they can't yeah. drink. Yeah. Uh, I have two friends that want to do something like this in the near future. It's what, only the like gambler 150 or, bucks. The, or the, the gambler? 500. Okay. Yeah. Didn't realize there was more on Twitch. Only 20. Oh, hey, there's, there's, there's four, four live on Twitch. Four now, but hey, that's... My channel on Twitch has 211 lifetime views. Yes. Lifetime. Lifetime. 211. I'm debating whether or not I'm going to continue it because it hasn't taken off. You know, if we just like did like those gamer girls and just like wear low cut Vs... And everything, and just be like, hee hee Is this what you want? Yeah, this that That we want, right there? <laughs> yeah. Do you know? Uh-huh. <laughs> hey, 212! <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> yeah, we know what you like. All right. Uh, uh, and it just showed up. Good was awesome. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it for our last episode ever of Talking Heads. <laughs> Band. Oh, man. Nice chest, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. What? No love? It goes all the way down. <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, all right. Man. All right. We good? I think we're good. Yeah, we're good. So lewd, yeah. That was, that was, that's the way to end it. Waiting for the content strike. Any time. I can't wait for the timestamp on that part. Yeah. <laughs> Nipple sh- or chest showing. That's right. <laughs> Hour, two hours, ten John's minutes. John's got the best chest. You have a fan. All right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Those cougar chasers. That's it. <laughs> Thanks for the advice on free NAS. Have it, think I have it working. Excellent. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You had that yep. going earlier. Yep. Very cool. All right. I think that's going to do it. That sounds good. We're uh, an hour and f- or two Whoa. hours and five minutes in. That's pretty good. Episode 41 in the books. Woo-hoo. That was good. Good beers. Mark that down. Even better cocktails. It's good. Even for a marginal whiskey sour that was made. Good. I've, I've, I've had worse, and this was nice. Yeah. Very smooth. Easy to drink. Yes. Yeah. 
Yep. And that was two and a half ounces of whiskey, one ounce of lemon juice, and three quarter. Uh, simple. Honestly, we we were we're basically up there with the uh, two imperials that we had. So. Right. So very good. Very good stuff. Good night, everyone. I appreciate you watching. Consider hitting me up on Patreon at Craft Computing. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing. Follow John at uh, Hops and Brews. Yeah, basically anything on Hops and Brews. Anything social media at Hops and Brews. We appreciate the views, likes, subscribes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers, everyone. Cheers.